and then go to a qualifier. And then there are some invite only teams, but Army being number one, obviously seated number one this year. Of course, we do know Lindenwood has won four in a row. So looking for a new opportunity is Army. And then Aquinas is the eighth team coming in on this side of the conference. So a tough day at the office possibly for both of these teams with the rain. Typically, we'd love to see that warm, sunny sunshine. We're having to make adjustments here. And Army with an early lead over Aquinas. And that one versus eight seed, always tough, isn't it, Darian? So very tough here, but you see the expertise coming in from Army. They're so technical, and you see that they're just flooding those gates early on. Aquinas, a new debutante here to the CRCs, but Army is well known for their sevens and their fitness. I mean, that try was no easy feat, but Aquinas showing really good effort here early on with the chase down. And there's the try scorer herself looking like she's going to go in again. Cecilia Aulis, one defender to beat. Nice tackle to get her right at that two meter line, but does get the offload. And then Army going to score again. So we're seeing what you mentioned, Darian, that experience, the power, the athleticism of this United States Army side. We'll wait for that conversion attempt. Looks like it's going to be to the side. So we know we've got at least 12 points scored by Army. And we want to thank our broadcasters. As you get a glimpse at the weather and the, the precautions they're having to take for the camera, our broadcast team out there with Next Level Rugby on, of course, the Rugby Network and YouTube, all having to work in these wet conditions always makes it difficult, not to mention the slippery ball on the pitch, but the teams that are trying to support us on the ground as well. But Army had a good route to get to the CRCs, playing in several tournaments and did very well. As so we can see that restart and that wet ball again, we're going to see a scrum here to Army. This will be a really good opportunity for them to be able to work from this set piece, Darian. Yeah, really exciting stuff here. We see Aquinas already off to the races, ready to go ahead and get the go forward. Army here having to back check here, but both teams are, again are going to be competing very much for that wet ball um, possession. And they're getting closer to that 22 meter line, driving forward, using their power. Going to try to get this one out to the edge and go around the outside. It's a nice carry by the wing. Now Army countering, though, stepping over and stealing this one. They're going to have to work out of their own 22. They're going to put the foot to it. And you could just see that rain coming down, but Army's there first. It's picked up by Alyssa Einshart, and she will run this one in for another try for Army. Well worked from their own 22. Really risky play there to kick, especially whenever you're kind of down in your end. Um, gaining possession for Army, again, we talked about they're smart, so they're able to regain the kick, and with their fitness, they're just going to glide over the line. Aquinas showed a little bit of promise there, but Army just looked way too strong here in the second half. And the conversion's off the side of the foot. So Army out to a quick lead. Ten and a half minutes gone in this first rainy, rainy match. Looks like it is just pelting them down there. But the conditions not stopping a quick army side. Aquinas struggling a little bit more to get it going in this match, their first match of the day. And on that restart again, it's going to go a little bit deep in that wet, slippery banana. Going backwards, said the referee, so we'll play on. I love that call. Into the hands of Asil Jadila. She offloads. It's more of a jam. And they're going backwards now, but here comes the restart. A nice big run by Olivia Seabright. But poached, and Army takes over. The pass not quite to hand. It's going to bobble around. It's been picked up 
by Aquinas. And we're going to come back for another penalty. A little bit of a slippery situation out there. Yeah, and it's really interesting to try and kick the ball when it's on the ground. It's really important to secure possession. So teams are going to have to get a little greedy when it comes to the ball. An army slicing through here. Going to see some speed on the edge. This is a beautiful run by the wing. That ankle tap tackle not to be... And Army going to touch that down, possibly dropped there. We don't have the benefit necessarily of TMO at the CRCs yet. We do have assistant referees, but looks like they're going to come and put this one under the post. You always dive in the try zone. I feel like it's a non-negotiable, especially when it's wet. But luckily, a referee tells them to play on, and now Army again get another score right between the sticks. And that conversion again going wide. So Army leading 37 to 0 over Aquinas. Really showing their dominance and their strength here. That number one seed, clearly the right call for them. And another deep restart through the hands again. And this one's going to dribble into touch in the last few minutes of this match. Army thinking about the quick. They go now. It's a good call. Aquinas a little bit slow to come to the line. It's an inside dish. What a run this is. That footwork is going to get him over the line. It's a beautiful run by Micaiah O'Boyle. Touching that one down off of that quick line out. Yeah, we've seen Army with a lot of space. They're able to kind of show their speed and attack around the corner. But the footwork showed by O'Boyle was just too good to pass up. They're doing such a good job of attacking that edge and working Aquinas. They're just not able to regather on defense. Army continuing it to run up the score. Yeah, they've got their foot on the gas and they're not stopping. 42 to 0. And they've got that whole 30 seconds to restart and they're not worried about it. They're going to go quick. This one is taken well by Aquinas, though. Just behind their 22. Big tackle coming in. Support coming. It's a pickup around the back. Liberty Cawthorn, but she is just smashed backwards. What a tackle that was. They get back to it, though, using their offloads. Going to try to go around the edge on this one. Army has a lot of speed, so they're able to stop. And then almost the intercept there. It is going to be called a knock-on. And a deliberate at that, so we'll go penalty to Aquinas. And just staying with penalty kick for that one, the match official. No probable try or deliberate beyond just penalty. So Aquinas back to working outside of their own 22. Again, this rain making it very difficult. Aquinas has adjusted to some shorter offloads, though. And we are starting to see some progression from them. A little bit better there from them. And the referee, though, seeing a knock on. And that'll be full-time. Army taking their first win of the day. 44 points to Aquinas, zero. Congratulations to them. And again, I am Wendy Young, joined by Darian Lovelace. And we are excited to bring you the CRC 7s. We'll be back in a moment with Iowa versus Southern Nazarene.
Welcome back to the CRC Sevens. Excited to bring you our second match of the day. We have fourth ranked Iowa versus fifth ranked Southern Nazarene. Really excited for this match. I'm Wendy Young, joined by Darian Lovelace, Florida Rugby Union, and Atlanta Harlequin, and a Premier Sevens player. And we have Southern Nazarene in the white, kicking off to Iowa in the black gold. They're typical colors for these colleges. And the kick, the weather here is absolutely going to be a factor here. You're going to see that we're going to have a scrum very quickly to Southern Nazarene. But the weather here, it is absolutely pouring. It is cold down at the Southern, excuse me, the Washington, D.C. in the Maryland soccer plex. So the weather is absolutely going to be a factor today. But what are we expecting from these teams, Darian? I think both teams are going to really have to dig deep. However, they're going to have to be very technical here. These are knockout rounds if you don't win then you're not moving on uh to try and get a shot at the championship so pressure is definitely going to be coming on for both teams as we see early on from iowa yeah and nice scrum there southern nazarene able to get through on the edge on this one and this is a bruising run by the number 12 talisa you have tafa but again, just another knock on. We've been seeing slippery ball in the first game. We just saw Army defeat Aquinas 44 to zero in a very good match for Army. And so it'll take these teams a moment to kind of get organized and maybe make some adjustments with this weather, the cold weather. And then it's a torrential downpour down there. It's hard to tell from the camera, but it is absolutely pouring. It's definitely no easy feat to play sevens in the rain seeing as how the ball really wants to try and move away from space but both teams are just going to have to learn how to link up and work very well together to try and consolidate and match official going to just reset this one not quite liking what he saw in the scrum there stays with iowa i know that referee from anywhere that's pete chamberlain And Iowa, it's quick out of the back of the scrum, and it's a nice big run by Keisha Montaylor. And some quick offloads for Iowa, just taking advantage of a little bit of a disorganization from Southern Nazarene. And we can see now they're inside the 22, and this one going to go across the line with a beautiful score by Erica Kulibia Bali. Kulibia Bali really solidifying a try here early on for Iowa. They needed that as we start to enter into the half, the beginning of this first half. Using the footwork, though, especially whenever conditions are wet and just working it through the hands is important. Iowa really finding their groove here. And South Southern Nazarene is really going to have to answer back quickly. And the conversion is missed, so Iowa takes that five point lead three minutes gone in this match and again sevens is the shorter version of rugby union seven minute halves so as darian mentioned they've got to get going they've got to score points and they've got to stop their opponent and that goes for everybody in sevens it's a low driving restart and just a little bit of a dribble there by Southern Nazarene. Not what they're wanting, but this weather continues to be, I think it's going to be the story all day. <laughs> and kickoffs too are no friend to the weather, especially in seven. So that's where we're really going to see the vulnerability. In that case, again, we're going to have to see a lot of adjustments coming from both teams. You're going to have to stray away from your game plan a little bit to take into consideration the rain and kickoffs. It's just going to be really important to make sure that you're fielding them for possession. And a good scrum by Iowa. They're able to get it out to the backs. Good tackle there by Southern Nazarene. And this one spilling out of the hands for Iowa. And now we'll have Southern Nazarene taking over. But better defense there by the team in white. Very impressed with the defensive pressure coming in early. The ball is taking a little bit of time to work its way through the hand. So teams are doing a good job of recognizing that there's some time to exploit and there comes the adjustments in southern nazarene you can see that fly half coming in closer but still we'll have another knock on we're gonna play a little bit of advantage though and see if iowa can make something of it it's a nice run to the edge but another knock on southern nazarene takes over they see some space on the outside they're going to try to use those big runners but loose ball picked up by iowa it's actually fly hacked 
And then now we will have a penalty as the ball carrier didn't quite have the ball yet and was taken out. So Chamberlain's going to give us that penalty. Iowa thinking about going quickly and then just slowing it down a little bit. Now they'll go. There is some space underneath the post. Can she get it down? She does. What a good try and individual effort by Squirrel Langloy. Number seven. She just she just slides right in there. I mean, there were about five or six South, Southern Nazarene players. She looks up. She's got space to the right. There's nobody there at home, but it's this heads up play. It's the head down dive, the rock and roll slide. Four people are trying to pile down, but it doesn't mean much for them. Iowa, again, just continuing to pummel down into the try zone. And this time the conversion is good. Iowa lengthening that lead out to 12 to 0. I mean, this rock and roll slide is one for the ages. She just needed an air guitar. And it's the determination. Again, these are knockout rounds, people. You have to win these games if you want a chance at the championship. Teams are going to be competing so ruthlessly today. Southern Nazarene taking over on this restart. Going a bit backwards, but we have seen an impact from this player. She's got through the defense. Let's see if she's got the legs. Looking for a little bit of support. What a run there by Yu Hatafe. But it's stolen by Iowa. Taken at the doorstep. Going to go around to the outside. Great job keeping this in bounds. Good counter ruck coming from Southern Nazarene. And then Iowa deemed to have been in from the side and off sides. So Southern Nazarene getting a big run by Talisi, Yu Hatafe. And let's see if they can take advantage of this penalty now. And they're content to just take this a little bit slower. But they are going to give it off to the big runners here. Good defense by Iowa. There is a little bit of space on the outside if they can get it there. But that pass is just going to go forward for Southern Nazarene. And Iowa taking over. And we are at that seven-minute mark. But, of course, the referee, Pete Chamberlain, has that official time. So he's got a little bit more time. So we will scrum. And this will go to Iowa, who does lead by 12 points. So they could add a little bit more before we go to halftime, potentially. Right here, we just again see Iowa putting on some defensive pressure. They are linking up so well, and it's these one-off runners in the forward pass. Southern Nazarene is just having to continuously work backwards, and they're not getting any go forward. And on the restart, big push from Southern Nazarene using that power. And now some good footwork and into the hands of that center. And now working it to the outside. They've got some green grass in front of them. And of course, it's into Yoha Tafa's hands. And she gets them all the way to the seven meter line. Ooh, Iowa defense though collapsing on those players. Southern Nazarene keeps it. Quick ball. Asking for it. Great hands, that one. That's Bailey Gillahan, who will get the first points for Southern Nazarene and close that score line. Wonderful work. The curse of the commentator. I was just talking about how Southern Nazarene hadn't really generated any good go forward. And here we see this player just pick it up. It's the heads up play, moving it to the space. We see this little bobble, but she keeps her eyes on the ball. That's what makes it so that you can retain the possession. It's the determination. Iowa's coming across. They want to tackle, but she's just too fast. Southern Nazarene now back in this game. Southern Nazarene crawling back into this one. 12-7. We're going to take a moment, and we will be back as we see this gorgeous try one more time. What we wear must be built for our game.
Since 1979, we've been searching for perfection. We've been thinking, sketching, and designing. We've been building, assembling, and strengthening. We've been cutting, shaping, and painting. Welcome back to the second half. We've got Iowa on top, 12 to 7 over Southern Nazarene. Again, this weather is the story of the day so far. Very cold at the Maryland Soccer Complex where the CRCs are being held this year. New location. You can see the weather sometimes on the camera just absolutely pouring down. But the teams here have made the adjustment. Iowa out with an early lead, but Southern Nazarene scoring at the half. And now we see them carrying this ball again, looking more confident. They've made some adjustments bringing their support players in a bit closer, and we're starting to see that paying dividends for Southern Nazarene. Really good defense there by Iowa, though. See if they've got a little bit of space on the outside. This one's a foot race. She's got the speed. It's a good run. Maya Hartnett got one defender to beat, but she's going to touch this one down. And the kick here is going to be absolutely critical, as you can see what that try meant to her. The hype is real for Southern Nazarene. We talked about them having to consolidate their game plan, and we see the adjustment ha happening here. They work it right between Ua Tuffy, who has been everywhere all over the pitch, but it's this number seven. It's her finish. Hartnett, she adds this heart to this team. Southern Nazarene now dependent on this kick. Kick looks good. <laughs> Fantastic. Southern Nazarene taking the lead, putting a statement on this. Last few minutes of the first half and then the second half as we see this try again. Beautiful work by Maya Hartnett. And then I just love her passion, as you mentioned, Darian, of when she scores. She knows what that meant. And the restart from Southern Nazarene. Sevens is unique where you make it, you take it. Or it's the opposite. I think, I, yeah, my 15s and my sevens, I'm mixing those up. So it's Southern Nazarene scoring, but then kicking off to Army. We're supposed to be the knowledgeable ones, huh, Darian? But Army taking over on this attack there inside their own 50, now crossing that 50-meter line. This is your original try score, your second try score. That was Squirrel Langlois, Langlois on the carry. And then now just that wet ball again. It's a slippery banana out there. Dropped, and we'll have a scrum to Southern Nazarene. This is where they scored their first try, so this is a good opportunity for the ladies in white. Southern Nazarene looking really promising. Iowa just looking a little bit fatigued here early on in the second half. They're really going to have to try and find some energy here as Southern Nazarene just shows so much promise. But Iowa, usually you just need one player to really take the team by the reins, pun intended here with the weather, and really try and get this team back into the game. Still a very winnable game, either team between the number four and the number five seed. So it's an exciting game here for us. It's a close one. Two points separating these teams. Nine and a half minutes gone. We did see a substitution coming in for Southern Nazarene. So some fresh legs could be the difference as they continue with this lead. It's out to the first try score. She has been absolutely critical for this side. Yoha Tafe. And then just a little bit of trouble at that ruck there, but able to contain it. And then it's again into Yotatafe's hands. But a penalty coming on this one, and he is reaching a dangerous tackle. So this, not what Iowa needed. Going to have to have a player in the sin bin for two minutes. Southern Nazarene restarting. We'll have that player advantage now. With that yellow card for the dangerous tackle they scored in the last moment of the first half and then right at the kickoff on this second half and looking like they're going to take advantage of this one player advantage. Tackled from behind. She's able to get the offload though. And just that messy ball. It's so rainy but picked up by Southern Nazarene and finally seeing that score from Talisi Yohatafe. She's been doing so much no. work for the Southern Nazarene side. It's, it's good to see her get five points. 
nobody more deserving here for Southern Nazarene. She has been working so hard to play scrum half at the back for her team, as well as set them up for these massive runs in order to extend their lead. But finally, she gets one of her own. Southern Nazarene now, Iowa just not able to get the go forward, not able to stop those offloads. They're going to need to answer quickly as we enter into the last three minutes of this match. And this conversion is short. And Southern Nazarene extending their lead 19 to 12. But just have come back. Barnstorming in this second half. Made the adjustments. Consolidated their play. And now are have got Iowa on their back foot. But as you said, Darian, all you need is that one player. They do have a one player advantage. So they need two players from Iowa potentially to step <laughs> up here and make the difference. And Southern Nazarene. Just needing a little bit of assistance, medical assistance, one of their players. So we will go time off here. Darian, what can Iowa do to get back into this? Iowa just has to play some really smart defense. This is the last two and a half minutes of the match. So there's still time to make a try and even extend the lead. These are knockout rounds. So a team, they're going to have to play till there's a winner. But Iowa are just going to have to play some really smart, connected defense, maintain possession. As I say that, curse of the commentator. Iowa heartbreak here as Southern Nazarene get the ball again. We just see people taking their eyes off of the ball for one split second. The kick is low. It's achievable. We see a little bounce down here at the bottom of our screen, but just taking your eyes off the ball for even a split second. We see the hands drop. We see the body height drop. The ball is an odd shape thing. It's not going to fit in there and just pops right back out. Southern Nazarene with possession. That bounce of the ball could be so cruel sometimes as Southern Nazarene takes over on that scrum. Some nice play using the weak side. And then just that loose ball again. It's this, this weather. We're going to be talking about it all day. Expecting over an inch of rain today. And then tomorrow the forecast is not looking that much better. Maybe even a little bit colder. So these teams are going to have to adjust all weekend. And we're excited that you're joining us for our women's premier bracket. We've got several more games coming your way. What's really smart about Southern Nazarene, and even though this knockout didn't this uh, knock on didn't exactly go to hand, but they're really smart in their offloads, and that's what's generating this good go forward for them against Iowa. But Iowa now back to their full team. They've got time to try and get one more try. And a little bit of pressure coming in that scrum, but Iowa able to survive. And then now some good footwork and leg drive from the ladies in black. And just scrappy here, but getting some space on the outside now. A couple of defenders. Wow, what a beautiful goose step that was. The confidence of Square, Squirrel Langlois. She's already scored once, and then she's going to get her side in again. The fend, the confidence there, knowing that she could get past that defender two tries this conversion God. is absolutely critical it's just an individual effort we talked earlier about one player just really taking the reins and putting on the putting on the gas we see the footwork here it's so subtle you can barely even notice it we see the corner flag coming it's the step away with the fun she creates such good space for herself she's got the wheels to burn that's almost a 70 meter try what an effort by Iowa back in this game with the conversion to come. Unfortunately, no good, but still more time to play. And Southern Nazarene taking this one. What a turnaround from them. They were losing at the half and then piling on the tries. Congratulations to the fifth-ranked team, upsetting fourth-ranked Iowa. Stay with us. We will have Penn State versus Montana State coming up next. Courageous strength and beauty time and again. Our machines are made for one thing. The perfect hit. We are the crouch. We are the bind. We are the set. We are the squeeze. We are the hit. We are Rhino, home of the scrum.
Third match of the day brings us Penn State and that blue and white, and then Montana State and the navy blue and white. This one should be a really good match. Seeing these teams, Montana State 7, Penn State ranked 2 in the East. And we have already seen some fantastic matches this morning. We saw earlier Army defeating Aquinas 44-0 and then Iowa just losing by two points to Southern Nazarene. And so we expect this one, regardless of the rankings, to be another fantastic match. I'm Wendy Young, joined by Darian Lovelace, coming to you on the Rugby Network or YouTube by Next Level Rugby. And the kickoff deep and the weather has been the story of the day you can see that rain coming down in your frame it's cold it's wet and it is absolutely pouring out there but the teams have been making adjustments as we see a nice grab there stealing this one away is penn state and trying to get it out to the edge but play on says the referee no knock there we will see a greater latitude for that hopefully today so we can continue to see some good sevens. But Penn State looking very controlled early on this and then going to score this one, touching down in the corner. Camille White, Penn State putting an early stamp on this one with that number two seed. It really started off of the kickoff with the defensive pressure. They were able to generate a turnover. Penn State is not new to the CRC tournament. They're always impeccable in their training right here. We just see them look up. It's a 3v1, very selfless play, and they're able to get some points on the board here early on for the number two seed. Yeah, Penn State third place last year, defeating Grand Canyon in that bronze medal match. Just some good work, seeing there's a space on the outside and having that confidence, even with the weather, pass this one out. And the conversion is good. So 7-0 to zero, Penn State taking this lead. And they will get their own kickoff. A wonderful skill to have if you can keep the possession from the other team. Going around the outside. Beating one defender. Two defenders. And touching this one down. Another try. A quick try. Madeline Sagi scoring this one for Penn State. What a big strike from her. That fend was just world-class. Being able to generate the separation, Penn State does the hard work of regaining that kickoff, but we just see that beautiful fend and then the head down, just speeding around Montana State. They're just not able to catch up to Penn State and the Lions again. Just extending their lead conversion, no good, but Penn State still leading 12-0. to zero. An experienced side, obviously coached by ex-Eagle Kate Daly. Coaching both their 15s and 7s side. So Penn State, very, very experienced. And as you mentioned, Darian, have been to this tournament since its beginnings. And now the chance for Montana State. Able to maintain this possession, but will be working outside of their own 22. Looks like there was a knock-on. So it'll be a scrum to Montana State. The Bobcats have their first real opportunity in this first half. Three minutes gone. The contest of the felines. The Lions versus the Bobcats. And now seeing Penn State lining up. So maybe some signal mix-ups from the match official. This is a big venue for them. Lots of pressure on the match officials as well. So going to see a forward pass here. So now a scrum to Montana State. Just inside their own 22. And the difference here, you know, in 15s, we would normally see a, an exit, a kick here. In 7s, we will rarely see that. You will sometimes see it, but would expect these teams to run out. And this one coming out of the tunnel, so we'll have a reset. Match official just wanting to make sure this is a fair contest at the scrum. Resetting those expectations. I think we're talking about distance is what this is looking like as Penn State is starting from that knee position, but then coming up on the set. Pressure coming. And the penalty 
driving through is Penn State. So Montana State will take over. They're going to take this one quickly. Poachers are there, but they're able to keep possession. Nice run. Look at the power from Denali Smith. And another penalty. So Penn State in some discipline trouble early in this match. They're going to go quick again, the Bobcats. A little bit isolated there, but able to keep possession. And the rain just pouring down on these teams. We have seen them make adjustments. They'll be bringing their lines a little bit closer. And that's why you're seeing a lot of loose ball. And this one going to go into touch. Penn State have the restart with the line out. They're going to go quick. Pretty sure that was touched by about four people, but the referee letting it go quick. And then just another forward pass as Penn State just seeing a bit of green grass in front of them and getting a little bit too excited. Yeah, both teams, we talked earlier about how each team is really going to have to basically ditch the game plan of trying to work it wide and working it through the hands and learn to adapt, especially in these conditions. Sometimes the thought is there, but the buy-in isn't, and teams are going to have to buy into a new pattern of play if they want to continue to maintain possession in very, very wet and not ideal conditions. And we talked about it a little bit, Darian. This is a, you know, loser goes home. So everybody's got to win on day one. It's always tough in sevens. But Montana State looking stronger here, more confident. This one just dribbling into touch. But um, this is really critical that teams essentially show up and perform as Penn State wanting to push the tempo. They're going to go quick again from that line out. There's a little bit of space on the outside. It's into the hands of the first try scorer. That's Camilla White. She sprints on through past the 22, and she will get her second try. Both tryers there in the try zone at number 11, White, but we see the earlier try scorer down there for Penn State. I mean, they just are doing such a good job of recognizing the space and rounding the corner. They're keeping the ball when they need to and pushing the tempo when warranted. They're just being a very smart team against Montana, and they're just continuing to rack up these points against the Bobcats. And we will go into halftime. Penn State with a solid lead, 19 points to zero over Montana State. Stay with us. We'll have more sevens coming up. In Soccerplex, where our third match of the CRCs sees Penn State in blue off to a very strong lead in the first half, scoring 19 points. Montana State seeing some sparks from them, but haven't been able to put that continuity together quite yet. They'll get us restarted. Montana State in the white, driving a nice long kick, causing Penn State to turn and chase this one. They're going to work it out of their own end, just outside their own five meter. Really good defense there by Montana State. Smashing tackle coming in. Big penalty to Montana State. Now driving forward. The ladies in white. And then diving over the line. But 
deemed to have been offside, so we'll come back for the penalty. Montana State with their first real opportunity to put some points on the board. They're going to go outside to the edge. It's into the hands of Liz Buckner. And then what a tackle that is from Penn State and the counter ruck coming. Ball deemed to have been out by the match official. Now going to try to go around the edge. Montana State just driving here. This is their best position of the match so far. Again, they need to score. They've got to close the score line as they work ever closer here. Now going to try to go out to their backs. Using that footwork is Sidney Strizky. But Penn State stealing this one. They've got advantage as well. Thinking about the kick, but deciding to run this one out. This is our first try scorer of the match, Madeline Sayeg. Over the 50. She's got nobody chasing. Just the match official. And she is working this. And she will touch this one down for the fourth try. And actually her second of the match, she's now tied with the other try scorer, Camille White. Yeah, Montana State did themselves a no favors down here. Got white line fever, continued to try and just take on Penn State. The Lions were fiercely waiting on defense. They're fierce in the contact. They're fierce in open space. We see the determination, how much it means to these teams for the knockout rounds. Penn State, the Lions are just continuing to run a mess against Montana. And unfortunately, bounces off conversion. No good for Penn State. They extend that lead 24 to 0. As we can see again, Madeline Sayeg just working it down the pitch here. You know you're running hard when your head is even moving with it. That's, that's the sign of sheer determination. Absolutely. As she gets her second. And the restart. Very long, almost to that 22 meter in Montana State. Going to try to get some points again on this board. Seeing better from them in the last few minutes. Much more organization. Backwards, says the referee. And then just working this one up the gut. The organization from Montana State, not quite as quick as it probably needs to be, but a penalty coming off sides. And Montana State's going to go quickly. Nice choice. We have seen her make some big runs. Sydney Stricky wearing that number eight and leading her side. But now down a little bit slow to get up is one of the Montana State players. And Penn State driving them backwards, Montana, now. And they're going to steal this one. It's a great counter ruck. But a knock on, says the match official. So Montana State getting a little bit of jail out of free jail card. <laughs> and we'll have a scrum. Yeah, Montana State just really setting up right in front of Penn State, almost making it very easy for them to get good go forward on defense. Montana State are really going to have to look to change their angles or find a way to change their game plan if they want to stay in this game against Penn State. Penn State going forward here, but stolen by Montana State and driving this one up. And we were talking a little bit earlier, we won't often see the kick, the exit plan in sevens. You'll see teams working it out, even in these conditions with the rain and the chilliness where they've got bone cold hands. An advantage, scrum advantage coming for Penn State. They've got some numbers on the outside. If they can get it out to the wing. Oh, what a stutter step that was. And now she is going to get this one as close as she can to the center, but a well-worked try by Kathleen Abo. It's the subtle movements in sevens that you don't really notice that make the biggest difference. We see them look up the 3v1 yet again off of a turnover. They move it away from the pressure area. We see Montana coming across. It's this little slowdown of time. It's this little indecisiveness that she catches the defender in. And she's just able to round the corner, back herself. Penn State, again, with the conversion to come, extending their lead against Montana. And off the post, so the flags stay down. 
But Penn State definitely in control of this match. We love the little show and go inside. It's the ball in two hands that really makes the defender wonder if she's going to give it back inside. She might know that she's taken it to the house. The defender doesn't have to. Penn State, again, just playing very intelligently here in Maryland. Only about a minute to go. Of course, the, rat, the match official, in this case, Roberts, has the official time. But the teams will play until that final whistle. And here comes the Bobcats around the outside. The last ditch tackle. Able to stop the attack, but stays with the Bobcats. And now into touch. And you can see that Penn State bench loving that defensive effort. And Penn State will have one more chance here. Potentially last couple of moments in this match but they will be proud to have put 29 points up and they get to continue on having won this match. And you can see the stadium. We are at Maryland Soccerplex, beautiful complex in the greater Washington DC area. A new location for the CRC this year. And there'll be three team, three fields of action today. You can switch between watching on the Rugby Network or on YouTube. And, of course, the broadcast brought to you by Next Level Rugby. Montana State with the restart on the scrum. Going to push this one out to the edge. It's into the hands of the wing. She's brought down, though. Not able to make too much ground. And maybe just a little bit of a miscommunication. This Montana State side's showing a little bit of fatigue as we do move into the red, now driving it outside of their own 22 towards their 40 meter line. And we have seen this woman do amazing things in this match and she is able to fend her defender. And now look at the blue in the chase. Can she outlast them? Just at the line, two meters. And then Penn State's going to get this poach, but no. Roberts is going to go underneath the post. It's got to be a dangerous tackle where a probable try could have been scored. Wow, what a turn that is. What an effort coming in from Montana State. This was the break that they needed. You see all of her teammates hyping it up on the side. The chase down coming in from Penn State. They're so fast. Right here we see her fall down. The little extra extension could have been fine, but it's just not releasing. There's no clear flash of hands. That's automatically going to be a penalty try had she not reached around. I think that the number eight for Montana would have gotten that try. Very good call there by referee, but Penn State. What a try there by Montana State, but Penn State will take this one 29-7, and they continue on in the cup. We'll be back with your next match in just a few moments. American Shaman. Find a location near you today. And a good morning to you rugby fans. Welcome to beautiful New Orleans, Louisiana. We have seven rugby action coming for you all day. Look, blow up the spot, then we run it. Ready or not, here we coming. Somebody better say a prayer for me. Tonight may get a little crazy. Handles that one, finally moving out. It looks like they are in the try zone again, extending their lead. In 
In our game, we play with our hearts. We don't play with sticks, bats, or gloves. We don't wear shoulder pads or helmets. We keep playing when it hurts. And we leave everything on the field. What we wear must be built for our game. It's time to take care of yourself and enjoy life again. CBD American Shaman has a full line of hemp-derived products to help you experience the fullness of life. Whether it's a better night's sleep, relief from worries and tension, or just having fun, consultants at CBD American Shaman will guide you on your journey. Visit findcbdnow.com for a location near you. Findcbdnow.com. CBD American Shaman. Life is better with the feather. In our game, we play with our hearts. We don't play with sticks, bats, or gloves. We don't wear shoulder pads or helmets. We keep playing when it hurts. And we leave everything on the field. What we wear must be built for our game. Since 1979, we've been searching for perfection. We've been thinking, sketching, and designing. We've been building, assembling, and strengthening. Maryland Soccer Plex, where we have our fourth match of the 2023 CRC 7s. Teams are coming out now. We can see that Virginia Tech in that white and orange. And then we'll have Michigan State in the green. This is a, a Virginia Tech mark, uh, ranked third and Michigan State ranked sixth in this Eastern Conference. We have had several exciting matches already happen today with victories by Army, Southern Nazarene, Penn State. So we'll see who this last grouping is to join them. And our match official in the center, George Ryan Caldwell. And then we are the broadcasters. I am Wendy Young, and I'm joined by Darian Lovelace. And it is a cold and very rainy day at this stadium. The team's having to make adjustments, and it has definitely been the teams that have made the adjustments early that have been the most successful. As we can see, Michigan State with the carry here wearing that green strip. Getting it out to that edge, but good defense by Virginia Tech. They steal this one. There's a little bit of space on the outside. Great job. They're staying in bounds, and they're going to continue this attack out to the right side. They've brought their lines in a little bit closer. You can see that difference already. Scrum advantage coming for Michigan State, a knock-on. And very quick to try to get this poach is Virginia Tech. They're going to make this difficult at the breakdowns today as Caldwell bringing us back to that scrum. Teams recognizing early on that there's a little bit of vulnerability around the breakdown here early on. So recognizing that might be the deciding factor when it comes to these games. We've seen a couple close matches here early on. These are knockout runs, so whatever team wins will advance and play against Penn State. And the scrum, a bit of pressure coming from Virginia Tech, but Michigan able to keep it. Now going around the outside, but a good tackle. And again, another knock on that rain. You can't really tell. Sometimes when the camera gets us another view, it is absolutely just pouring down out there, just making the conditions very difficult. We've been spoiled over the years at our CRC tournaments with normally very gorgeous weather. Of course, there's been outlier years. But this Women's Premier Cup has some excellent teams this year, as we can see Michigan State stealing this one against the head. And now around the outside, 
But another good defensive tackle by Virginia Tech, deemed to have been a little bit high, so advantage coming. Going to come back for this penalty. Michigan State. Lots of possession so far in this first half. Two minutes already gone. They're going to go quickly. Dish. To poach. And they do steal this one. And their real first opportunity with ball in hand. Getting some space on the outside. It is into the quick, quick hands of Sidney Gaskin. But what a from behind tackle that was. And taken into Gaskin. touch. Gaskin just not enough gassed around the corner there. Again, we see the determination coming in early from Michigan. They are ready to play and do not want to let Virginia into that try zone. On the line out, the restart, driving them back into their 22. Bit of a bounce pass, so it's a, it's a fight for it. Comes out on Virginia Tech's side, maybe. Yes, they have stolen in a good position. They've got their line stacked now. Lots of support coming here. Michigan State getting organized. We can see those green jerseys getting in a line. But there is space on the outside for Virginia Tech. Going to take this one from the base and change directions. Another loose ball. Just cold out there. Those cold hands being... Difficult for all the teams today. It's whoever's made the adjustments has been the ones that have come away with it. But now again, out to the outside. It's a two-man overlap, a two-person overlap, excuse me. And into the hands we saw early running from Sydney Gaskin, and she gets this one down this time. Gaskin was just so patient there, waiting on the edge. She allowed plays to develop. We talked about them having to consolidate their game plan, and Virginia Tech did just that with a looping play around from that support attacker. Michigan was trying to fumble back there. We see conversations happening early on down in the try zone. Again, these aren't ideal conditions. All teams have been training so hard to get to these knockout rounds. But now comes the real test. Are they able to adapt? And the quick restart from Virginia Tech wanting to push the tempo of this match. But Michigan State inside their own territory, working their way out. There's that Jackler again for Virginia Tech. What a beautiful poach that was. The good patience and to be coming through the gate. They take over the attack now. Picked up. Nice leg drive by Chandler Woodford. And now they'll take this out to the right side. Bouncing ball, but picked up by Genevieve Miller. Big run from her. And now penalty advantage not rolling away. Free play for Virginia Tech. And there's so much pressure on these matches. They have to win. You can't lose your first match and then regroup. This is a winner-take-all in this bracket. And Virginia Tech up 5-0 to zero with a penalty. The restart, moving it through the hands. There's the try score. Gaskin beating one, two. Stepping out of that tackle, the Fen comes, but a good tackle by Michigan State to save that try. They get back to it. Ball is a little bit slow, but they're able to move this through the hands. It's loose again, and this one going to be knocked on. Looking better from Virginia Tech, though, looking more confident. Virginia Tech definitely showing a lot of promise there with their ball handling skills. Now that they know that they can push the width a little bit more, the thought process is going to really have to come to breaking to the ball. Gaskin had a beautiful line break but lacked support, and now we see this turnover. Michigan it now will be happy to get the ball finally back. Pressure coming in the scrum. Able to get it out of the back are the Spartans. And then around to the outside. Nice work there. That's a good run from Liz Jewell. Able 
And that one will be off the boot, so no knock on. Play on, says referee Caldwell. And a little bit of space on the outside, but there's our try scorer Gaskin driving her into touch. And that will be the first half. Virginia Tech just up by five points in a very close affair. Stay with us. We will be back in a moment. We've been cutting, shaping, and painting. We've created strength and beauty time and again. Our machines are made for one thing, the perfect hit. We are the crouch, we are the bind, we are the set, we are the squeeze, we are the hit. We are Rhino, home of the scrum. Welcome back. I'm Wendy Young, joined by Darian Lovelace. We are picking up the second half of this third-ranked Virginia Tech side, taking on sixth-ranked Michigan State. Virginia Tech up with a five-point lead, just one try in the first half. And the tension of this match has been phenomenal, with both teams having opportunities but not able to capitalize, as we can see that. Restart does bounce into touch, so we'll just have a line out. Unfortunate there for Virginia Tech. It's not a position that you want to be deep in your own half, especially to start out the second part of this match. Knockout round. This last half is going to be crucial for both teams. It'll solidify if they're able to continue on for the championship. And stolen against the head, Michigan State. We've seen them steal a couple of possessions at the scrum as well. Now moving that ball to the right. Looks like we've got some fresh legs in. Welcome to the pitch, Tristan. Trinity Vincent with the carry there. She's able to offload to Aria Kleber. But the pressure from Virginia Tech, we saw it in the first half, has been they haven't stopped. They've put their foot on the gas. They've been at every breakdown poaching, and we see that again here from Virginia Tech. That's a good carry by Cara Hendren. And just a fight there at the breakdown with Michigan State coming up with it. So giving Virginia Tech a little bit of their own medicine. We will see that sometimes when they have their halftime chats, the calibrations. And what a big run again by Vincent coming in and just lighting this Michigan State side up. You can see her bench coming off. They're so excited to have her in the game and making a big impact. You see high fives coming around from Michigan as they start to finally rev up their energy. They looked a little flat in this first half, but again, teams are going to have to learn to be able to link up well early on, especially seeing as how these conditions are so good for rugby. Because of that, teams are just going to have to get really smart. Michigan now showing a little bit of fire. They're going to need it to continue on against Virginia Tech. And we can see the fans starting to come in here to Maryland Soccerplex, defying the weather. We're seeing lots of umbrellas in the stands because it is a, a balmy 50, 55 degrees out there, and it is absolutely just sheeting rain down. But the team's adjusting to this weather. And this one, Virginia Tech holding a slight lead. Nine and a half minutes gone in this second half in this match. And seeing Michigan State going backwards a little bit. But Vincent picking this one up and getting them on the front foot, the Spartans. And a nice carry there. The deft footwork of Rosie Pite. But that Virginia Tech defense is relentless, flying through and just disrupting Michigan's play as they're moving backwards in their attack. 
This one just choosing to jam that is Vincent, getting it back to her teammates so they can continue the attack. Picked up by Virginia Tech, now stripped back into the hands of Michigan State. It's just like this match has been so back and forth, but now getting a little bit of room on the outside is Michigan State, but just touching that white line. A defender that never, ever, ever misses is the sideline, and it is so important to cut back in that <laughs> defender is always going to make the tackle, and that just turns over into a loss of possession for Michigan State. They showed so much growth there, but Virginia Tech now on the mend, but <laughs> Michigan back in this game with the stolen line out. Again, stealing at the lineout. We just saw that moments ago. A critical move by them, identifying something with that jumper. And now they are just outside their opponent's 22. It's Vincent again with the carry. She beats one, two, finally taken down. There is a poacher, but knocked on first. Michigan State doing all the right things and just the luck not going their way in this second half. Virginia Tech Got a little risky here early on in the first half by really trying to work the ball through the hands. Michigan now with the speed. We're seeing it, this player right here at the bottom putting on her headband as she is ready to fly. She's got some speed. Possibly if Michigan was able to just do a little bit of risk and link up, then they'd get a little bit more success. But Virginia Tech back with the ball down in their own end. Pressure coming at the scrum. It's a little bit of a messy ball, but Virginia Tech driving it out. We've seen a lot of big runs from Kara Hundren, and she offloads to number 12, who's around the top, and that is going to definitely be some advantage for the penalty there. I think she got a bit of jersey and a bit of that braid. Never want to see that. And you could be looking at some color, Darian. Are we going to see some cheese? I mean, unfortunately, it's really looking like that from the number four. We don't see really any want to drop. It's just a hang by the collar, almost like she was trying to pull her off stage. Virginia Tech, you see the flamboyancy. She wants that tackle. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like it was very comfortable either. Probably a card if I had to guess. However, no card, so it's looking like it wasn't intentional. So just a penalty in Virginia Tech driving into Michigan State's 40-meter now. They do have five points already scored early in the match, looking to do it again here. What a show and go that is by Margaret Wright, who was just taken down by that horse collar. But Michigan State stealing at the breakdown. Beautiful work there. We saw Virginia Tech do that in the first half, and now Michigan taking that tactic. Here comes the penalty. And the clock ticking, though. Less than two minutes to go in this winner-take-all match. Michigan State okay to take their time and get their training ground move set up. It is a tap and go. She's going to go herself. Aria Kleber. And the offload not quite to hand. It was low. Not what Michigan State needed there. The problem with taking a quick tap and then taking it straight into the pressure area of defense is that you're probably going to end up generating a turnover. The point of the penalties is to move it away from the pressure area so you can generate the go forward. The risky play we had talked about, however, this is not the time to risk it when you're in front of a sea of white. Virginia Tech clapping that one up as they'll again get possession and enter into their own half. And less than 60 seconds on our clock, of course. Caldwell has the official time. So Virginia Tech going to work on time management here. We've seen lots of big runs. Here's the original try scorer. Gaskin stopped this time another knock on. So Michigan State has one more opportunity to get a converted try. Virginia Tech just being really good about the 2v1. We see her take in the ball. It's just that one second of taking your eyes off of the ball, not trying to reach for it and just letting the ball come to you. He's going to make you pay if you don't want it. <laughs> and unfortunately, it looks like Michigan, again, will get the ball back. And five points would tie. And then obviously a converted try would win this for Michigan. But stolen by Virginia Tech. First Jackler there. A very critical move by Emily Richardson 
to maybe seal this win for her side as we move into the red. There is a knock on. Does Caldwell have more time? He does not. Virginia Tech taking this one 5-0 to zero over Michigan State in a tight, tight game. Stay with us. We will have your fifth match coming up next between Brown and Kutztown. American Shaman. Find a location. Welcome to match five of the 2023 CRC 7s. We have a number one Brown versus number eight Kutztown in our West bracket. Brown will be in the black and red jersey kicking off, and then they will kick off to Kutztown in that maroon and white stripe. I am Wendy Young, joined by Darian Lovelace, Florida Rugby Union extraordinaire, and PR 7s player as well. We're excited for this matchup. It's our first West matchup. We know all of our East winners and losers now. The losers go into that survival and winners will stay into the cup. Our match official, Sybil Dean. And that kick bouncing in, but going into touch. And we're going to go quick. It's Brown. They're going to want to keep the engagement of this match, the tempo high. Head coach Rosalind Chu, longtime life U coach, now moving over to Brown and has brought that same tempo to Brown as well. Just a little bit of a knock on though. So we'll have our first scrum of the match to Kutztown. Yeah, being coached by Rosalind Chow, um, I had the pleasure of winning two CRC championships under her. She is very much about pushing the pace, continuing on. 
trying to do their best to generate the go forward. She is not new to the CRC or sevens. It is her bread and butter. So Kutztown is really going to have to play some smart clinical defense and attack against Brown. If you're going to humble brag, then I guess I can too. I've played with Roz many years ago on the Valkyrie. So wonderful to see her doing so well at every university she's been at. As we can see, Brown, beautiful two-on-one there, getting it around to the outside. Kutztown in there, though, trying to make this a messy ruck. As we can see, the weather has been the story today. You can see the rain pouring down. Penalty coming to Brown. So keeping this attack alive, but cold there in the 50s and just rain making it very difficult for these teams. Adjustment has been key. And Brown going to choose the scrum, liking that set piece opportunity. The saying is no rain, no flowers. So I think we're just going to see a lot of growth this weekend across the board for all teams. These are knockout rounds, so they are really crucial, but both teams are just feeling each other out as they try and consolidate. Picking it up off the base and going out to the right. Good tackle by Kutztown. Going to come back for another penalty. Early discipline problems as Brown is going to touch this one. Or going across the line. Now going into the center and scoring. Beautiful footwork by Maddie Parker. Brown was looking for that try zone since the beginning of this half after turning over the kick. And they're just able to get over the line because of their ability to build continuity and work well off of each other as well as work well off of the ball conversion to come here early on for brown they'll slot it in and extend their lead seven to zero over Kutztown. and brown wearing that number one seed in the west conference comes with a lot of pressure but touching down early two minutes and 45 seconds into this match and they will have the restart Unfortunately, we are expecting this similar weather tomorrow. So teams, if they win today, will have to contend with this again. What a kick that was. Not quite 10, but just almost into that Brown player's hands. And Kutztown will have the free kick. I almost got too excited for that kickoff. As a former kicker, it was great to put those up and then put your, your player underneath them and let them run all the way in. It was always one of the best things you could do. We Just having a so bit well of discussion of here with us. Sorry, go ahead, Darian. I said we would have played so well with each other then, Wendy. <laughs> Looks like referee is having a conversation, though, with the team. Sybil Levine just answering some questions here as Kutztown getting ready for this set-piece move from the free kick. Driving that ball almost up to the 40-meter line. This is really their first possession, not 10. Kutztown getting the benefit of that. They're going to go quick. Not to hand, but picked up. Big tackle coming there from Brown. That's the try scorer, Maddie Parker. And again, making another tackle. Putting her stamp on this game very early. And now a short ball. Into the hands of Gabrielle Quigg. Stolen by Brown. And jamming this one back to restart their attack, but losing it forward. Those These conditions are just so difficult for these teams. Usually CRCs, we're seeing sunshine and gorgeous weather, maybe too hot and a lot of sunburns. Of course, there's been outlier years, but not this year. Cold and wet. Yeah, and individual skills are so important whenever it's cold and wet outside, making sure that you're keeping hold of the ball, even ball presentation and working hard on the ground as soon as you get tackled. We're seeing some balls kind of fly out wayward and just putting teams under pressure. And the try score picking this one up. Parker finding a bit of space with a good offload. Room around the edge. Across the 22. And across the whitewash and now has the opportunity to take this one in to make this kick a little bit closer. But Brown getting their second try in the first half. 
extremely selfless play coming in from Brown. You could see the intention kind of happening there early on with the play. She had the ball in two hands, that primary attacker, but it was that looping play, the extra bit of effort that's going to make it so that you get through to these knockout rounds that Brown is showing. They're just continuing to extend the lead. We see the ball in two hands. She attacks that last shoulder. Last defender has no choice but to pin on her, but we see the determination, the grit, the resiliency. Could sound coming across, but nobody's going to catch her. She's right underneath the sticks for her team. Brown taking it to Kutztown. And you can see the precipitation on the lens. I think that's Morgan Cunningham wearing that seven in the scrum cap. Scoring for Brown and extending that lead to 14-0. to Just about a minute to go in this first half. And again, we've seen this twice where the restart has been allowed to go into touch. So Kutztown going to work outside of their own 22, deep in their own end, with just about 40 seconds to go in the first half. And it looks like we'll have some replacements coming on. Some fresh legs could be the difference for both of these sides. Of course, Kutztown needing to get some points on the board, and Brown would like to put more on going into the half. Stick with us. We'll have some exciting matchups coming up next. Indiana versus Northern Iowa, Iowa State versus Michigan, and Texas A&M versus Navy. As Kutztown is able to survive the lineup pressure coming, though. And it was not straight is the call. So Brown will have a choice. They can choose line out or scrum, but no surprise, they're going to go with the scrum, the safer bet. Very smart decision there. Just about 22 meters out. Brown again showing their intelligence with rugby as the number one seed coming into this conference. Kutztown is just hanging on. They're really going to have to pressure this defense if they want to make sure that Brown doesn't get another one down. Not much pressure at that scrum as Brown pulls it out of the back. One more pass. Diving, reaching over the line again is Brown. They will extend their lead at the buzzer of the half. We will have the conversion. And wasting no time, she puts this one up. Doesn't look like it's gone through. Brown will go to halftime with the lead, 19-0 over Kutztown. Stay with us at the Maryland Soccerplex. We'll be back in a moment. Near you today. And a good morning to you, rugby fans. Welcome to beautiful New Orleans, Louisiana. We have seven rugby action coming for you all day. Blow up the spot, then we run it. Ready or not, here we coming. Somebody better say a prayer for me. Tonight may get a little crazy. You can leave me. Handles that one. Finally moving out. It looks like they are in the try zone again, extending their lead. play with our hearts. We don't play with sticks, bats, or gloves. We don't wear shoulder pads or helmets. We keep playing when it hurts. And we leave everything on the field. What we wear must be built for our game. Welcome back to the second half. We have first-ranked Brown in the West leading Kutztown number eight, 19 to zero. There is seven minutes to go. I'm Wendy Young, joined by Darian Lovelace as we bring you this fifth match of the women's premier CRC sevens. Kutztown is in this maroon, white, and gold strip, and then Brown in the black and red. 
not wearing brown. Always found that interesting. Very interesting wait. tactic. <laughs> match official Sybil Levin to get us going for the last seven minutes of this match. Kutztown needs to start quick and get some points on the board. It's a low kick. Picked up by our second try scorer early in the match. And now here's the first try scorer. It's Parker. Long legs, able to get around the outside. One defender to come. She won't need her, though. Parker touching this one down for another try. Two for her. Parker made that look so easy and so seamless, just slicing through the defense almost untouched. The anticipation of the support play is really what set Brown up for that, and they're just able to continue to put on these points against Kutztown without an answer. We see here just the heads up play, the two hands, but then she tucks it. She knows that the speed is there. She's got these long legs. We see a little trip up back there with Kutztown, but nobody's going to stop this athlete. She's going to take it straight to the house. Brown in the black, continuing to extend their lead. And the conversion is good. 26 to 0, definitely in control in this second half. Going to need some magic from Kutztown. They'll work out of their own 22. Penalty in from the side. Kutztown has to go. They do. The clock not on their side. If they are going to score any points in this match. A nice, powerful run by Gabriel, Gabrielle Quigg. We've seen some power from her in the first half. Good to see her doing it again for her side. Now looking for a little bit of room on the outside is Kutztown, but not quite to hand the weather. Just the difference in these sides today. This defensive pressure by Brown has just been everywhere. Kutztown has no answer for them as they're just able to come up. We see the heads up play coming in early. Just again, taking your eyes off of that ball for one second. And that leads to the turnover rather quickly for Brown. This is just not what Kutztown wants. And Brown in an advantageous position. We've seen them score from the scrum. They're going to go to the weak side. Around the edge. She's already scored one. She's going to get in for her second. What a heads up play by this Brown player. And this is Nikki Lynch. Just a really good set piece play here. We see them recognize that the scrum half goes to the left. And then she just looks up. For America, rounds the corner, just dishes off this Kutztown player and continues to just pump her legs right on over the knockout rounds. It looks like Brown is going to continue to knock out Kutztown as they advance through the second half. Brown looking unstoppable as Lynch gets her second and then Parker also has two tries. Showing up for their side. Ten minutes into this match. 31-0. to zero, A commanding lead. Kutztown needing some magic. And it doesn't come again. The kickoff not to the hands of Kutz. Now Brown just weaving through. She'll touch this one down in the middle of the post. Another gorgeous tie try for Brown. She almost did the two-step on the way down. We talked about these subtle movements as soon as you get into open space to really cause indecisiveness. It's this pressure off of the kick. Kutztown just not able to get under it cleanly. We see Captain America underneath that ball, but it's right here, that subtle little cutback inside, that separation that she gets, the cutback again on the inside. That defender is fixed. And because she's caught stagnant, Brown taking it all the way downtown again between the sticks. And Kutztown, just heartbreak here for them as Brown just continue to put on the points. And that is Morgan Cunningham with the try, adding her name to the tally sheet. This one, Kutztown able to get the kickoff. Now beginning their attack. We've seen some big runs from Quig. She does so again. Oh, hesitation at the scrum, excuse me, the ruck there. 
Now going backwards, Brown is just relentless in defense. We saw this in the first half. Anytime Kutztown got the ball, there's just black and red all over them. Small knock on. Kutztown will have a scrum in the last few moments of this match, but Brown looking like they're in the driver's seat. Kutztown trying to work to their strengths. Like you said, they have a lot of really good, strong runners that have been very powerful in the contact, but sevens is not a game of contact. The problem is, is trying to find the space. Brown really not giving an inch to Kutztown. Big pressure in the scrum. Good hook there from Brown to steal this. Looking for a little bit of space on the outside. Now comes the offload. There's a little bit of grass, but yes, touched into touch goes Brown. Kutztown saving, saved by that white line again. Coach Rosalind Chow will probably talk to Brown about that. We used to um, talk about how the sideline was lava and that if you jumped into the sideline or got tackled by it, that you would get burned. So, Brown, stay inside. Ross doesn't play with that. It's cryptic. It's like Star Wars when he's melting in the lava. <laughs> Dark yeah. Vader. Sorry to spoil that for anyone who hasn't seen that movie yet. It's fantastic. We've got a little bit of injury time here. One player is down. So a replacement coming on for Kutztown. Just under a minute to go. So Kutztown will move into that survivor challenge. And Brown will move on to the cup. And they will have to see who their opponent will be as we await the next couple matches here. But Brown stealing the line out, driving to the line and touching that one down. Just the nail in the coffin for Brown. Little stamp for them. Brown just, again, they have been impeccable with their heads up play and their ability to move it to space. Right there was a little bit under pressure. We see kind of a miscue with Kutztown. They don't get her up to full height or extension. And then it's just a subtle little pick, the fend, the leg drive, a textbook try as she dives it over. Brown bringing all the hype. Looks like we might have one more play in the arsenal for this game. And Brown will be in no hurry just to get this kickoff going. They know they're going to the next round. They've done what they came to do on Friday at this 2023 CRCs. This one not going to go 10, though. So Kutztown will have one last chance with a free kick. What magic play do they have in their playbook that they can pull out now? And it's Quig coming to do the honors of the restart. As you can see, that rain just making it really difficult for these teams. And they're going to go through the hands. It's a pick, though. Taken by Browns. That's Aziza Alford. She offloads to the wing. Catherine Moley will add her name to the try sheet as she gets this one down. Potentially, referee taking another look, maybe. I mean, just flooding the gates. She anticipates the tackle. She gets in that space, cuts right back in, and then picks it off. Her job's not done yet. She continues to pump her legs, gets the ball back in two hands, and gets that offload. We see the determination coming. Probably could have dotted it down right here, but wants to show that extra effort by getting it between the sticks. But Goodstown says, we don't mess around still. Looks like it might have been a little high. It might be a debate. Looks like try was awarded, though, to Brown. So they will get this one after a bit of discussion just to extend their lead. That's Catherine Moley getting this one down. So Brown will take this match. They move on to the cup, keep going in the competition. Next up, we're going to turn over the broadcast mic to our friends, Abby Casais and John Broker, who will take you to your sixth match at the 2023 CRC 7s. It's time to take care of yourself and enjoy life again. CBD American Shaman has a full line of hemp-derived products to help you experience the fullness of life, whether it's a better night's sleep, relief from worries and tension, or just having fun. Consultants at CBD American Shaman will guide you on your journey. Visit findcbdnow.com for a location near you. 
FindCBDnow.com. CBD American Shaman. Life is better with the feather. In our game, we play with our hearts. We don't play with sticks, bats, or gloves. We don't wear shoulder pads or helmets. We keep playing when it hurts. And we leave everything on the field. What we wear must be built for our game. Since 1979, we've been searching for perfection. We've been thinking, sketching, and designing. We've been building, assembling, and strengthening. We've been cutting, shaping, and painting. We've created strength and beauty time and again. Our machines are made for one thing, the perfect hit. Rugby Championship National Collegiate Rugby. It is sevens going on. You've had some great games there from our friends, Wendy Young and Darren Lovelace. I'm John Broker with Abby Gestitis bringing you this next matchup between the Hoosiers of Indiana University and the University of Northern Iowa Panthers. They've been a big team in here last week. Abby, this should be a good matchup. This rain is going to play a factor. Indiana is going to be running left to right on your screen. The rain is always an equalizer, but the girls will be super stoked to be out there, get a chance to run around representing their schools, their friends, their families, and what a match underway. Their first time at this tournament. And we are underway now as it is Reverie Cho getting us going here. He's from the Southeast Rugby Referee Society. Ball goes quickly to the Panthers, but they knock that one on. And quickly in the rain, that wet ball gets involved. Going to be a great early attacking position for this Hoosiers team, Abby. We're going to see a lot of scrums today. Like you mentioned already, that rain will be a huge factor. So turning that ball over straight away to Indiana. They'll want to tighten up here. As you can see, those red jerseys getting close. The most important thing is to keep that ball in your hands. You don't have to score off first phase. Just build the pressure, break into this match. And teams here playing to go on to the cup division. This is a knockout tournament. As we've been saying, a great opportunity here for Indiana. Indiana moving the ball. Going out to the right side high there. And nice little step. Gets the ball into O'Brien's hand. Switch backs into Zinn. Gets the ball back to Ari O'Brien. Ari O'Brien taking down eventually. Nice footwork from this Hoosiers team. And a little step coming in there from Magruder. Magruder puts the ball down. Did it slip forward? Referees right on the spot. Indeed, it has going to be a scrum here for the Panthers inside their own 22. Indiana playing a dangerous game there with the offloads. I love the idea, but this is not the weather to do that. You have to be so in tune with your teammates, hands ready. Just set the ruck, build the 
and go face to face. Andy Henderson that gets that one in. The junior from Montour, Iowa, gets in the University of Northern Indiana. Excuse me, start, Iowa started, and they are off onto the right hand side from inside their twenty. Looking for a big run here. That's the Stanerson Edwards. She's been a couple of these CRC tournaments. She is experienced. Stanerson Edwards, the senior from Anamosa, Iowa, from Monticello High School, may put down the first five points, and indeed she does. You and I on the board, 5 nothing, coast to coast. Stanerson Edwards. Have a look, Henderson, just an easy pop. And it's honestly, it's just speed. It's a 1v1 battle. She takes the corner. Stanerson Edwards opened this match with the first five pointers. I remember calling her matches last year. We said her name a lot. It didn't take her long to get the name out early on. And she brings Northern Iowa up 5-0. Yeah, Northern Iowa, good players across the board, up 5-0 over this Hoosiers team. Hoosiers going to have to answer back. We're just under three minutes gone in this first half. Ball up and into Hoosiers' hand on the far side of the field. Well taken there. Get the ball to Magruder's hand. She's been a bit of a dangerous runner so far. A little offload, doesn't go to hand, slips forward. Referee show. Calls a knock on. We're going back for a scrum here for the Panthers. Better attacking position for them now. Indy still for those offloads, those extra passes. Best to take the ruck, get your skin, and then continue to build, as we've mentioned. Now gifting that ball straight back to Northern Iowa where they have those threats. Northern Iowa most likely just getting ball straight to the edge. Maybe Sanderson Edwards has another. Straight up the middle they come, just getting this one set. A big run coming on there from Hannah Roth. Hannah Roth gets turned over, however. Great work there by Magruder. She has been active for this Hoosiers team so far. Winner of this game plays Brown in the next round, who has defeated Cutstown in the game previous to this. But another scrum here in this slow-moving wet weather for the UNI Panthers. All there by the referee, it had looked like Northern Iowa knocked the ball on initially in the first tackle. However, ball remains with Northern Iowa. They have that dangerous threat edges. Those center wing com working well in tandem. See if on the board for a second and try here. That's Henderson, the recreation tourism and nonprofit leadership major. It gets the ball out, and UNI goes back in the other direction. Player diving over there. It's going to be a penalty for leaving your feet. It's going to be quick ball here for the Panthers. Panthers are indeed going to go quick. The player getting up slow there in Morgan Link. But ball gets out there to Hannah Roth, the criminology major. She shows the outside and goes straight forward. Quick ruck ball coming here. Looking to go out to that width. A little step back in. Good work there from you and I. That's Emma Bacon. She's no stranger to the tri zone. And the sophomore from Mitchellville, Iowa. Touches down for another five points. Up to 12 here for University of Northern Iowa. We're seeing threats all over the pitch in those purple jerseys. But Emma Bacon there. Five points to her name. Just that little subtle movement back inside. She has the strength. And there you see that kick go off the uprights. Couldn't do that if we paid her. But score remains 12-0. There's one more look. Bacon just comes right back inside. Catches her defender flat-footed. And she's so close to the turn. Just powers over. Dots it down emphatically. You and I kick this one off. We're at six minutes, just one minute to go in this first half. Sevens action here at the Collegiate Rugby Championships in Maryland, brought to you by National Collegiate Rugby. Ball goes to the 40-meter line. Hoosiers need to get some points on the board before halftime. They have 50 seconds to do so. This time, a penalty against the Panthers. Hoosiers opportunity here, wasting no time. Going to take this one quickly. Have a couple of runners here. The referee show says, hey, you got to put that through the mark. So let's bring ourselves back. And now we can go. 
Barreling run there from Desi Rodriguez. Rodriguez turns it over there to the Panthers. It's been all Panthers so far in this first half. They have 20 seconds on the game clock. Can they put another one in? Good ball on that left hand. Looking for offend if needed. Take in the corner. It's a big run. It's Standerson Edwards again. She nearly gets tackled, but gets up, takes it again, headed towards the try line. Last ditch tackle there from Zinn. Turns it over to the Hoosiers. A referee show on the spot there. Going to bring that one back out. We have no time in the game clock. We're in referees' time now. It's going to be a scrum here for Indiana on their own line. Abby, some really good defense from that Hoosiers team. Of that fight from Indiana, they know they're down two tries. It's so easy to just say, all oh, Sanderson Edwards is away, but that fight, that perseverance to chase her down, create the knock on, and then get the ball back. Potentially want to kick this one out, just go into halftime at 12 nil down. Having to go 95 meters is massive, but penalty to Indiana. And certainly they're going to give a try for that 95 meters. They get it up into the hands of one of their danger runners. That's Magruder. Every time she's touched the ball, she's been effective. Ball up there to Mary Akers. Akers gets knocked on. That time it's knocked on. And referee Cho whistles us for halftime. 12-0 at the half. University of Northern Iowa really showing their experience right now. We'll be back with second half action in just a moment. Since 1979, we've been searching for perfection. We've been thinking, sketching, and designing. We've been building, assembling, and strengthening. We've been cutting, shaping, and painting. We've created strength and beauty time and again. Our machines are made for one thing, the perfect hit. We are the crouch, we are the bind, we are the set, we are the squeeze, we are the hit. We are Rhino, home of the scrum. Welcome back to the Collegiate Rugby Championship, the CRC's referee show, getting ready for the second half where the University of Northern Iowa Panthers are leading 12-0 over the Hoosiers of Indiana University. The Panthers are going to be running from left to right on your screen, and they kick that one off. John Broker here with Abby Gastitis bringing you the second half action. We'll bring in Abby's expertise in a second. That one doesn't go 10. They're going to bring it right back to midfield. A referee Cho giving the Hoosiers the short arm penalty here, the short arm free kick as they assemble their team. And off they go, taking the direct route. Nice little break. Good footwork up the front from Venditti. And a penalty for Looks like a high tackle against the Panthers. Hoosiers starting off well. Hoosiers looking for the corner. They have the step. Hoosiers around, and that's Magruder. She's been effective, as I said. Magruder, the junior from Indianapolis, went to North Central High School. She's a Big Ten All-Star, and she touches down here at the CRC. Abby, what a good start for this Hoosiers team. ...them right back in this match, and she does it all. She recognizes that Northern Iowa not, they're not set. They're still getting back 10. And she has that beautiful stride and dots it down, bringing this game just within one try. Great work there from the Hoosiers. They'll have to kick this one off. You and I will want to answer, of course. You and I coached by Megan Flanagan, joined by Casey Anderson, Eileen Lieb, and Lynn Clyer. School from Cedar Falls, Iowa. Indiana coached by Vaughn Mitchell and Mackenzie Davis coming here from Bloomington, Indiana. 
Indiana to get this one going again. And they do a long kick, goes down to the 22, rolls back, so they'll be good to go. Up that right-hand side come the Panthers. Big contest coming in from Indiana at the breakdown. Players seem to be off their feet from here. Referee Cho spots it, and they're going to go quick and going to try to get that 10, but not needed. Referee's going to bring it back, however. Says that was not from the mark. So, Annie Henderson, I have to bring that one back. And choosing a scrum, interesting choice here for this uh, Panthers team to bring some players in tight and try to isolate someone from down in their own end. The players have to be aware that the ref calls the mark for the penalty so tightly because they're just wasting. And then you see Indiana are back 10 when Hendon has to go back to the mark. So I think it's a good call to go for the scrum while Indiana's defense is already set. Nice show of the ball there from the Panthers. Panthers across the 22. That's the link. She was down a little bit earlier, but she seems to be okay. The first-year player from Cedar Falls right in town there. That ball goes back. Nice work. Get back to Susanna Church. Big clear out from Jesse Inman. And here come the Panthers. They've got some runners out wide. If they can get it there, a big handoff coming from Roth. Roth tries to get that one back, but spills it forward in the rain. Just three minutes gone in the second half. Four minutes to go. Indiana attacking position in the middle of the field, just inside the Panthers' half. Roth and Sanderson trying to connect there on the edge. However, Roth needs to make sure she has both her arms free when the ball's slippery like that. Throwing those 50-50, those one-handed, offer dangerous, and it's not worth it just giving that ball back to Indiana attacking platform. Ball comes around Rodriguez. Rodriguez turns the corner, eventually caught up. A little tussle for the ball going on, trying to get it to the ground. Have done. A little pick off the back, Rodriguez. A little different tactic that this Indiana Hoosiers team takes. Ball spills back. It's picked up by Venditti. You can see who their key players are doing a lot of work in the second half. Another penalty for a high tackle against this UNI team. Another opportunity here for the Hoosiers. Hoosiers across the 22. They're down by seven points. If they score, it would be great to score in a good position here for a kick, but big break. Mago running right to the post, and that's a player, Magruder. Magruder gets it in, a referee on the spot. Another five points, kick to come. They tie it up. It is the Indiana Hoosiers in the second half, really pouring it on. Big tackle coming in there from UNI, but just from the base, Magruder sidestep. And she just powers through. It's Stannerson Edwards unable to hold on. And then also getting there and strong running that scene for Magruder, even from close range. We know her for her speed, but she shows us that physicality and that strength to power over the line. 12-10. Hoosiers ball here. Did not make that kick, so a little more work to do with two minutes on the game clock. We get that ball backed in to Ari O'Brien. O'Brien, the senior from Indianapolis, went to Bishop Chittard High School. Hands the ball over, a kick coming. It's like a Mosley kick, that one. Inside the 22, the Panthers have to start from. Panthers, they have to play intelligently here. Nice break, make it out to their own 40-meter line. Work down that short side. Big break coming. It is Annie Henderson. She's got the wheels. It does not look like Rodriguez will be able to catch her. And in near the post is Annie Henderson. Great vision, great awareness. Just scoots around the side. What a try. Annie Henderson with the breakaway and advancing that lead for UNI. This is exactly. The impact you and I were looking to have in this second half, it's a slow start for them, but they're back and their individual athletes are really pulling through from them. A few missed tackles from Indiana and you and I take that seven point lead as the version no good. 
Under a minute to go on the game clock here. Another opportunity for these Hoosiers. They can tie it up with a converted try. Would be tough to come away with a win here. Would need to do it quickly. See the rain pouring down here in Maryland today at this Collegiate Rugby Championship. Wonderful event going to be taking place over the next three days. You can stay with us on the Rugby Network and the NCR YouTube page. Nice break there from Magruder. Cannot let her get free. Here come the Hoosiers. Nice little spin move from O'Brien. O'Brien's trying to step one, but gets a big tackle in there and a big break over that it causes the knock on we're going back here for a scrum to the panthers great defensive work indiana just showing poor support for two coming in instead of securing that ruck they're looking to pick that ball up however with these wet conditions much better option just to secure that ruck and then have your support come in next and be that nine Time one down, 15 seconds. Henderson it takes it. Henderson it spills that one. It comes up near Magruder. Magruder near the touchline. Can they bundle her out of bounds? And they do. Nice work there from the Panthers. And referee Cho whistles us for the end of the game. And the Panthers are going to move through with a 17-10 win over Indiana. Great opportunity. Stick with us. Navy versus Texas A&M coming up. And then the last first-round women's game, Michigan versus Iowa State. Abby and I are going to bring you that action. We'll be back. Welcome back to the Maryland Soccer Complex. 
John Broker here with Abby Gostaitis bringing you this match between Navy, the University, uh, sorry, the United States Naval Academy versus Texas A&M. The Aggies, you see them running the field. A&M is going to be in the white and maroon. And in the blue is Navy looking strong. New varsity team here. Abby Gostaitis, great game coming up. Definitely a great game ahead. However, the will play that factor. Navy will be the favorites here coming into this tournament. They're also a home side, just less than an hour drive to this complex from Annapolis. And they'll be used to this weather being <laughs> signing up to join the Navy as <laughs> is. So hopefully the water doesn't affect them too much. It affected that kick just a little bit, but that's a great point, Abby, as Texas A&M is going to have a free kick at midfield here. Navy coached by Murph McCarthy and Ted Chapman joining that National Intercollegiate Rugby Association. Recently, College Station is where Texas A&M is from. A little bit of a longer trip. Good team here for Texas A&M. The Aggies coached by Lindsey McKinney and Becca Caranu. Or can you, excuse me, mispronounced there. Free kick coming for Texas A&M. They're going to go straight up the middle, just try to set this one up. On the move they go, coming around that right-hand side. Navy drives them back just a bit. Picked up and driven from this Navy team. A fight for the ball going on just inside the half. A referee says, everything's cool. Let's keep playing. A referee for this matchup, Fuderman, is taking charge as the ball comes around, but referee's going to bring that one back. It's going to be a knock on some scrum here just inside the, ha the Navy half for the Aggies. And this wet weather is certainly wreaking a little havoc with this game so far. Scrappy play for sure from both sides. A lot of knock-ons we've seen throughout the day, which means a lot of scrums. Texas A&M with the first opportunity just around halfway. Nice break there from the Aggies. They get driven back. And a penalty this time against Navy. Big ball taken here from the Aggies. Aggies making some good room here. Aggies just outside the 22 of this Navy team. Ball gets held in, however. Player doesn't release. It's going to be Navy. Did that one slip? It did. Slipped through the mark. Going to be a scrum here for Aggies. Good result for Texas A&M. Just trying to rush it a little too quickly there were Navy. They did the hard work. They got the turnover in the breakdown and then just a little knock on as she tried to pick up the ball after releasing it for that tap penalty. Ball in from the tight head side here for the Aggies. They've got some runners out wide looking to go straight and just barrel it in, set it up, have runners coming around either way. Another tussle for the ball with Navy. They're going to be tough around that breakdown. Player coming in, trying to turn that one over, but Aggie's ball. Aggie's ball comes up to Reyes. Reyes looking for somebody to offload there, too, and finds it. Looks like Brianna Macias. Ball taken away by Navy. They're at their own five-meter line. Fit certainly shouldn't be an issue with the Naval Academy. And a big break down the left-hand side after a period of defense comes for this Navy team. Player can't hang on. What acceleration coming there from Marissa Meyer. Marissa Meyer is across the 22. Marissa Meyer, the sophomore from Cincinnati, Ohio, under the post. Try awarded Marissa Meyer. Great work, Navy, after some very staunch defense. Marissa Meyer opening up this match for Navy. She's an M.A. Sorensen nominee. She plays center in the 15s aside game and brings that physicality to the pitch. But she also has the wheels as we see her streaking down the side and just getting that first try for Navy. A big start for them after a messy first three minutes. Kick is good from Leitz. That is Megan Leitz, or Lights uh, puts that one in. Lights a first-year player from Kathlamet, Washington. Now at the Academy, adds the extras. So 7-0 we are. Just under four minutes going in this first half here at the Collegiate Rugby Championship. As we said, stay with us after this is going to be Iowa State versus Michigan. And then we'll bring you the opening game of the men's division and the first 
quarterfinal for the women's premiere. Another kick doesn't go to hand. And the Aggies, 4-15, go on in this first half. Opportunity to attack here from midfield. Good defensive phases put together by them. Just ripped away at the end from Davey. Let's see what they do with this one. Such a disappointing attempt at the kick after opening up the scoring from Navy. Ball spills forward into Navy hands. Navy little break up the middle. A nice run, getting some distance. Player coming in, but cle nearly cleared off. A referee calls that one quickly. It's going to be a penalty here at 4 a.m. Navy player in a little confusion there. But Aggies on the move as we're just about to hit the five-minute mark. Two minutes to go on the game clock in this first half. Women's Premier Division here. There is a rugby all week long in Boyd's Maryland at the Maryland Soccer Complex. Brought to you by National Collegiate Rugby. You are in the area. Make sure you attend. If not, feel free to keep listening to us all weekend as Nicole Dupre is going to take this one. Knock on there from the Aggies. So good attacking position, Abby, here for the Naval Academy. Naval Academy lacking a little bit of support for me in this first half. Keep getting those turnovers. So to tighten up, they need to follow their pass and be off their teammates' hip. Quickly taken on a free kick there from Navy. They're just outside the 22. Get that ball to the ground. Clean ball coming. A little step back inside from the good defense, but big break. That looks like lights. She gets across the 22. Ball out. They've got an overload out to this left-hand side if they can work it out there, but a step inside. Player taken down. Decides not to use that. Oriana Howard feeds that one out, and Navy now just outside the line there, knocking on it. That looks like Sienna Hall took that one down. A pick and go coming here, keeping it in tight. Prey gets it again, tries to move it wide. Ball knocked down. It's a loose battle for it. It's going to come back to Navy. Navy it looks one way, goes the other, gets the ball back to Megan. Lights again. Lights moves it. Step back inside. That's the try score. Meyer. Meyer heads towards the line. They're inside the five-meter line here and picked up and gone in, referee whistles it. Another try here for Navy on a heads-up play. Going to bring them to 12, just about 20 seconds left in this first half. Marissa Meyer with a double. Navy making it quite hard on themselves. They keep cutting back in, expecting Texas A&M to just fall off the tackles. But pretty strong defense. They have a solid wall. Navy able to hold that ball throughout those phases and eventually get it down in the try zone. And that looks like halftime here at the Collegiate Rugby Championship. 12-0 Navy leads. We'll be back with second half action in just a minute. <laughs> We're back for the second half here at Texas A&M Trails, and they're going to kick off. They are in the hooped jerseys there. 
and Navy in the blue to receive this one. John Brugger with Abby Gastitis for the second half here. Big matchup here in the first round of this Collegiate Rugby Championships Women Premier Division. Women's Premier Division. Kickoff soon to come. Referee just waiting for the final word to get us going. And off we go. Texas A&M. Navy having a little trouble with the restarts, but not the Aggies. That ball slips backwards, so they are good to go. Navy big breaker on the outside there. Oriana Howard, the senior Arabic major from Newport, Rhode Island, gets that rid of that one, excuse me, and a big break coming here from Navy. Look at the speed getting poured on here by this Navy team. Tremendous run, tremendous try. That is Chrissy Foster touching that one down. The senior gets on the board. Just sheer speed down that side, Abby. I loved that breakaway, the sloping, arcing run. She evaded all the defenders, Navy, not the cleanest takeoff, the kickoff, however, had that great continuity amongst one another. And then opening this match up in the second half with a quick five-pointer. And the kick is good. So they're up to 19-0. Plenty of time left in this half. Navy to kick off. Navy looking strong to go through and continue to battle for the cup. Aggies take that one, work their way to their 40-meter line. Being held up currently by the Navy team, have to get themselves to the ground. See if the referee pulls us them all. The scrum would go to Navy, but player gets to their knees, and off they go. Players need to release once that happens, but ball spills forward. Good result for Navy. They have a scrum advantage, which will quickly go away. They're getting some room as the ball gets to Sienna Hall. Sienna Hall, the junior oceanography major from Reno, Nevada, Ball gets out. A nice little step there. That's light. She has been effective in this game. Touches it down for Navy. Another five points on the board. Navy looking strong here. Navy just coasting into this second half. And Megan lights ball in two hands. A little stutter step in as she holds up the Texas A&M defender and then has the speed on the edge, our kicker for Navy here all game. But getting into the try zone herself with that kick, just not quite going where she wanted to. I do love her little uh, pre-kick there. She takes one kind of swing at the air and then gets going. It's, a little, it's an interesting routine, to say the least. But uh, Navy is still rolling here. Navy, uh, if they go through, will play the winner of Michigan versus Iowa State, the next matchup that Abby and I will bring you here in the Maryland Soccer Complex. Ball down to A&M. Late charge here from them. It is about four minutes ago in this second half. Big hill to climb with those 19 points, but that will help a little. A penalty against Navy for player coming offside. See what the Aggies can do with this. Across midfield they go. Get the ball to the ground. Well recycled. See if they can get into some of their outside speed here. That one just hits the ground. Wet weather, as we've been saying, making it all here at this great event. Ball back across, but spilled in the contact area. Going to be a scrum here for Navy, and they are ready to attack once more. We've seen that a lot at the base of the ruck. The scrum half going to pick up the ball and just losing it forward. For me, that, that indecision. They don't know if they're going to pick and have a go themselves or if they're going to pass it. You can mitigate that by just passing off of the floor. However, that's a strong skill set. Ball in for Navy. Big drive from the Aggies. Aggies turn that one over, but the ball's loose. Pounced on quickly by an Aggies player. Kind of going back and forth here. A little bit of a mess. Penalty for the Navy player playing on the ground. And it will be an Aggies penalty just outside of their own 40-meter line. They're going to go quick there through Isis Davis. Isis Davis gets to midfield. Navy putting some pressure on here. The breakdown. Additional players need to come in, but a player is off their feet. Referee Fullman, he is from the Chicago area rugby referees union. 
Nice break forward here by Suzanne Eubank. Eubank, the junior from Chiang Mai, Thailand. A and M get the ball up there to Reyes. Reyes offloads. They're playing a little bit tight here. We want to spread this out against a defense as strong as Navy. That was Eubank taking it again. A referee spots a knock on in there. Good defense from Navy forces that. It's gonna be a scrum here for Navy right at their own 40 meter line. You mentioned it already, John, but we saw almost all 14 players right there within maybe 10 to 15 meters. I sweat conditions are not, not great. Long, beautiful passes, but you got to spread the field if you want to get in the zone here against this Navy team. Ball spills forward there from a Navy this time. Wet weather is going to create a fair number of scrums over the weekend for these teams. So it'll be Texas A&M ball. We're about a minute and a half to go on the game clock in this game. As we said, the final first round women's game, Michigan versus Iowa State. The winner of that looks like they will be playing at Navy in the next round of the cup here at the Collegiate Rugby Championship. And from the tight head side they go, that is Anne-Marie Johnston puts that one in. Looks for a runner coming around this right-hand side. Gets it to Isis Davis. Isis Davis, the ecology and evolutionary biology major at Texas A&M. Takes that one into contact and they come back out there. The Aggies on the move. Aggies get turned over by Navy. Navy going to go. That's Morgan McPeak. McPeak, the junior from Denver, North Carolina. Penalty against the Aggies. Navy going to go quickly. Nearly a big break. Up to midfield they go. Support is there. Nice offload. Do they have the speed? Coming down this short side. Just inside the touchline they stay. Here it comes. Navy, they've got a penalty advantage. It's probably for a high tackle. It is. We'll see what they decide to do. Oriana Howard is going to go in and take this one. Oriana Howard was already graduated from Nuclear Power School as she's getting her degree at the Naval Academy. Howard gets that one to ground. Aggies in trying to clear off that one, but can't get it. It's back out. Ball comes into the hands of Nicole Dupre. Out wide they go. There was room on the outside, but Navy tries to stay in and keep that one a little bit tight. Might have wanted to go and take that opportunity. Working for some offloads here. Sadie Iting. Pick and go on that one. Puts a little ball up in the air. Did it slip forward? Referee says it did. Late game here would be a scrum for the Aggies, but a referee's going to whistle for the end of this one, and Navy will move on to play the winner of our next game, Michigan versus Iowa State. We'll be back with that action right after this.
CBD American Shaman. Find a location near you today. We are back here at the Collegiate Rugby Championship. John Brugger with Abby Gostaitis bringing you the final game of this first round for the Women's Premier Division. It is going to be Michigan in the blue and maize yellow and Iowa State to take them on. After this, our first quarter final is going to be Army versus Southern Nazarene. That's going to be at 11.56 a.m. Eastern time right after this matchup. Women's quarterfinals to come throughout, interspersed with some first-round games from the men's premier division here on Stadium Field. Should be a great matchup coming. Wolverines here to kick off in the Navy. Iowa State to receive Michigan missing one very talented player this weekend, but good across the team. We will be underway in just a moment. We'll bring in Abby's expertise right after that. Ball dribbled along there. It's referee Hellman Dollar to take this one. Iowa State, first touch of the ball here. Lauren Cuffle makes a tackle, the number 25 for Michigan, and turns that one over. Lauren Cuffle, the 21-year-old senior, some very good accolades to her name, gets the ball there to Maddie Bowers. Michigan brings that one in. They're just inside the Iowa State half. Or the Iowa State half, yep. And Iowa State looking to poach that one. Cannot. They're going quickly across through the hands. They've got a runner out wide. See if they've got some speed here. Slips off in the rain. Referee Hellman Dollar spots. Give me a scrum here for Iowa State. A little bit of nerves creeping in early on here, Abby, for these teams. Style of tournament. It's knockout. Be there going to be nerves there's going to be anxiety so you have to do everything to focus on what you can control in that moment iowa state here with early attacking opportunity against a strong michigan side who will be the favorites coming into this match and a break here from iowa state they've got some room down the sand good cover tackle player rolls in a touch scrum here for michigan just outside their 22 what a brilliant option for Iowa State to go up that weak side. However, inexperience showing, getting taken into touch. As soon as you're in that five-meter channel, you need to cut back in if you're not going to gas your opponent. Couple goes short with that one. Has to pick it up and take it herself. Michigan just drifting cross field. We'll get a long way to go. Big hit. Turns it over there for Iowa State. Going to be a scrum here for Iowa State. Just in front of the post. A wonderful attacking position for them. You know, Michigan just going a little sideways there and drawing the defenders across, allowing them to make that big hit. Iowa State with some great pressure off that line out. No hesitation. Like you mentioned, Michigan not striking the line, not being a threat with ball in hand, which allowed Iowa State to continue to come forward and close that space. Iowa State, another break off the right-hand side, looking for that outside space. It gets spilled to the ground and chipped forward. So we're going to go back for yet another scrum, this time to Michigan, just about 15 meters out from their own line. Just over two minutes in, 
but it seems whoever can minimize their errors will march down the field and get into the try zone and probably end up taking this game. I know it's early on, but just a lot of mistakes early on giving that ball back to the other team. That one slips in behind Cuffle, not the ball she would have wanted. They're on their own line, under a lot of pressure. Ball comes, going to be a scrum over the five-meter line to Iowa State. And this is that knockout rugby, those nerves creeping in, the weather wreaking havoc. One try can make the difference in these games. Iowa State put in. A five-meter attacking scrum. You can't come up with a more perfect scoring opportunity. Excited to see what Iowa State do here. Scrum half has been running a bit herself. They go a little sideways. Good defense coming around there from Michigan, but they get it off to one of their players. And first try is going to go to Iowa State here at the Collegiate Rugby Championship. Up five points off of that attacking scrum. As you said, Abby, it worked out well for them. You can see how much it means to Iowa state the smaller faces fiving their teammates this is a big moment for this squad they know their dogs coming into this match but they had too much pace too much power to be stopped just five meters from the try zone and that kick is no good. It will stay five. There's three minutes to go in this first half. Ball's gonna get kicked off from Iowa State to the Michigan Wolverines. So it'll be an opportunity for them to attack here. First try should settle things down a little bit for both teams. Ball kicked forward, goes back over Cuffle. She's been involved quite a bit here. That pass, a little errant out there. Michigan able to get the ball out to the edge here. Maybe some opportunities as they come back across field. Big pressure coming in from that Iowa State defense. Looked like a forced knock on, but a referee says, let's play. We're going to continue with that one pretty obvious. And they're back inside their 22, Michigan. And Iowa State continues to roll forward. So Iowa State scrum here again. We've already mentioned the scrum half loves to go herself. So maybe she'll pick here. But look at the top of your screen, that left side. There's a lot of space there without any Michigan defenders. Ball comes out from their scrum half for Iowa State. She does a good job coming across and drawing in a couple of players. But that time pass doesn't go to hand. Minute and a half to go in the first half. Michigan has been inside their own zone for most of this. Cuffle to put this one in. We will see if they can move down the other end. Cuffle, an All-American, a U23 select, a Michigan select. Good player to have as your scrum half and distributor at this Collegiate Rugby Championship for Michigan. That ball slips, however. She has to just push that one back, and they're in their pressure in their own end yet again are the wolverines big work coming in from this iowa state team referees letting these teams play it's going to come back to michigan but a penalty this time against iowa state may relieve a little bit of this pressure they're through the mark and off they go trying to move that one to cuffle cuffle moves a little wider Michigan at their own 22. They're going to have to get this one to the ground. They're moving forward, so they're okay for the moment. They've drawn in a lot of Iowa State players. That ball rolls on the ground. Here comes Michigan, however. This time a big break, getting mired down by what is a very tenacious Iowa State defense. Nice break coming down the side here. Eventually, this could be the opportunity for Maddie Bowers. Maddie Bowers steps back inside. The junior from Ann Arbor gets hauled into touch. It looks like it's going to be a line out here. Oh. Referee, assistant referee, changes his mind, and it is going to be a, a line out to Iowa State. I thought Maddie Bowers was going to be scot free down the touchline. Iowa State coming across, making a critical tackle, and getting that ball back for their side. Iowa State ball in hand. All right, the ball comes back to Michigan that time. This time they have an opportunity. Ball back across. They're missing a lot of these kind of first connections here and having to keep the ball tight as that's Katie Gale that winds her way around. Katie Gale at the 22. She shoves off a couple. The sophomore from Grand Rapids, Michigan, takes that one in the touch. They have a little momentum here. We'll see what they can do with it. Cuffle, just a little pick and go. They're going to keep this one tight in the rain. Ball coming to the back. That's McCalmont at the back is going to be the distributor for this one. McCalmont, the sophomore from Grand 
Grand Rapids moves that one. Katie Gale has a hold of it wide. They look right down the center here. Try coming for Barbara Biero. The Sao Paulo Brazil board junior touches down for five. And Michigan are right back in this one. Barbara Barrow tying it up for Michigan, but what a worked try from this blue side. Re team effort. The support was there the entire time. They secured the ruck. They powered through some tackles. They used their pace and just all around effort. And a nice kick there, but not going to make it. We're back here. It is halftime. It is all knotted up at five. Unless I kick one through, we'll find that out for you and be back with an exciting second half for the right to play Navy in the quarterfinals right after this. We are in the second half here. Michigan takes one quick. They go for a break. They're going to pour this one on. John Brugger with Abby Gostaitis bringing you this final game of the women's premier first round. Coming up next, Army Southern Nazarene, the first quarterfinal. We'll talk about the other quarterfinals coming up after that. Nice break from Michigan. They're looking for that outside. A little change in tactic here. A ball gets popped up there. But knocked on in the rain, scrum here for Iowa State. Abby, a little more intent here from this Michigan team to start the second half. Trying to build off that late try scored in the first half. Just doing a little too much there. We saw them able to build pressure in order to get those seven points on the board in the first half. Jamie French will be disappointed with throwing that ball off the ground instead of securing that ruck and building pressure throughout phase play. Iowa State with their very elusive scrum half come off the back of that one. Iowa State inside the Michigan half. Nice break coming there across the 40-meter line. The foot race is on. The wrestling match is on. Ball gets popped back up to a Michigan player. Good work to bring that back. Get it into the hands of Maddie Bowers. Maddie Bowers just hands that one up to McCalmont. She's going to take it into contact as they reset their offense. They have a couple of runners out here. See what they can do to get this one wide. Have done. That looks like Deneus. Deneus takes that one in. Michigan to the ground, come in, a good clearance. They still have the ball, runners off to either side, get the ball up there to Bowers. Bowers trying to do a bit herself here. Driving forward they are through Kelly McCafferty. Oh, sorry, excuse me, that was McCalmont again. Ellen McCalmont, the sophomore from Grand Rapids, went to City High School, doing a lot of work for this Michigan team in the second half. Now they have some open room to run. Defender coming on, taking it around the side they go through Donatani. Tony gets that one back. Michigan still on the move. Michigan get the ball to Cuffle. Cuffle has not found open ground as of yet in this game. She's doing a lot of work in tight. Ball comes up to McCalmont. McCalmont happy to roll that one forward. Cuffle again in that distributor roll. Gets it out. Ball spills forward. A referee spots it. Still two points in this. Right at halfway will be the Cyclone Scrum. 
with about four minutes to go on the game clock. There was some lovely bit of skill there shown by Michigan in the lead up to that knock on, moving the ball side to side, stretching the Iowa State defense, just ball in front, slipped through the hands, and then it's going to be a knock on. Looks like time is off here, according to the referee, as he calls in for, for the screen. All coming in here for Iowa State right at halfway. Scrum half a little more well marshaled this time, but able to get the offload away. Isolated play out there for the Cyclones. Can Michigan take advantage of it? Have done. Player not releasing. Good work defensively. And you're going to have Bowers. That's her couple ready to take one as she moves it out quickly into the hands of Donna Tony. Donna Tony. And good since she's appeared in this game. Another penalty against the Cyclones. Three and a half minutes. Another try would do a world of good for this Wolverines team. Iowa State. The Cyclones have other ideas, of course, as that one it gets into the hand of Katie Gale. Gale moves it. Looking for the corner this time. Taking a little bit of the long route. I have to keep her feet as she slides back in. Ribeiro, Ribeiro. The junior computer science and linguistics major takes that one in. Ball comes back here. Bowers in the distributor position to Cuffle. Now they've got some runners out wide if they can move this one out. A little bit slow to get there. Player taking a flat-footed, but a big handoff there. A big run coming. This could be the difference as Deneus takes that one in. Deneus puts it down. Cuffle takes the pick and go. Big battle right here at the breakdown. They're able to take that one up. Deneus, Cynthia Deneus gets rid of that one. The first year player from Norwich, Connecticut. Ball comes into the middle of the field. Nice wraparound. Looking for a runner there. Finds it in Bowers. Bowers gets it wide. Ribeiro steps out. Ribeiro steps back in. The line's in front of her. Try awarded good interplay from the Wolverines. Five more points on the board. Extending their lead as the second half rolls on. Michigan with that second by Ribeiro, dotting it down. And I love that right foot step. She saw both the Iowa State defenders. Their hips were to the touch line. They were going sideways. And she recognized that cut back and hit that seam perfectly. Less than 10 meters out, she wasn't going to be stopped from there. Kick is good. We're at 14 to 5. A bit of a hill to climb in two minutes for the Cyclones team. So we said to get ready for the quarterfinals. Army versus Southern Nazarene coming up next. And then we'll open the men's division. Will Abby and I. It is going to be East Carolina starting that one. They're going to be playing at Notre Dame College as the men's premier division gets underway. Women's final tomorrow night, Saturday night, men's knockout rounds, mostly on Sunday. Full weekend of rugby action, National Collegiate Rugby bringing it to you. John Broker and Abby Gestites here for this one. Last game of round one for the women. Long kick from the Wolverines. Inside the 22 they go. It slips off the player. Did it go forward? A referee says, well, let's play. So here come the Cyclones inside their own 22. The tackle from the Wolverines, unable to turn that one over. Still with ball in hand, one minute to go in the game clock. Could be a little bit of referee's time after that. Taken to the ground, ball slips out forward from where I was looking at it, but it'll be a penalty here for not rolling away against the Wolverines. And here come the Cyclones looking for a good run and a big break coming. The referee's going to bring it back. Players were not 10. She's not going to award an advantage there. Here come the Cyclones. Nice tackle in the midfield. Under 30 seconds to go in the game clock. More than a converted try away here for the Cyclones. They'd have to score twice. Break around the outside. Cyclones looking for late points here. A little sideways run, good defense. Michigan really starting to feel their way into this tournament. Ball down just around halfway. Here come the Cyclones, still going. Big challenge comes in from the Wolverines. Nice pick and go. Players in over that, taken away by Michigan, taken away well. They 
hoofed that one towards the touchline, hoping at the end of the game, a referee spots it and says, yes, indeed it is. The Wolverines will move on to the next round. Iowa State in the other direction, but still a lot of rugby coming for them. We're going to be back with Army versus Southern Nazarene, the first premier women's quarterfinal coming up. Stay with us. CBD American Shaman. Find a location near you today. And a good morning to you rugby fans. Welcome to beautiful New Orleans, Louisiana. We have seven rugby action coming for you all day. Look, blow up the spot, then we run it. Ready or not, here we coming. Somebody better say a prayer for me. Tonight may get a little crazy. Handles that one, finally moving out. It looks like they are in the try zone again, extending their lead. Play with sticks, bats, or gloves. We don't wear shoulder pads or helmets. We keep playing when it hurts. And we leave everything on the field. What we wear must be built for our game. It's time to take care of yourself and enjoy life again. CBD American Shaman has a full line of hemp-derived products to help you experience the fullness of life. Whether it's a better night's sleep, relief from worries and tension, or just having fun, consultants at CBD American Shaman will guide you on your journey. Visit findcbdnow.com for a location near you. Findcbdnow.com. CBD American Shaman. Life is better with the feather. In our game, we play with our hearts. Welcome back to the women's premier quarterfinals here at the Collegiate Rugby Championships. This first one is going to be Army West Point. The Black Knights taking on the Crimson Storm of Southern Nazarene. The other quarterfinal matchups, Virginia Tech versus Penn State, Brown versus the University of Northern Iowa, and Michigan will take on Navy. This is John Broker with Abby Gastitis for this first one. Abby, everything pretty much going as predicted here. Southern Nazarene, a little bit of an upset over Iowa. Going to take on Army now in this quarterfinal. They're up against a very tough Army team. Definitely a big ask for Southern Nazarene. But like you said, they were up for it. And with knockout rugby in general, it's only 14 minutes. Anything can happen. But I did pick Army to win the whole team. So I think they will get the job done here. They are a well-oiled machine under Bill LeClerc. And they have just proven to be absolute class throughout this season. Sure, they had some pretty good coaching this season as well. Some guest coaches coming in. Big break from Army immediately up that right-hand side from West Point, New York. Of course, the United States Military Academy, a legendary institution taking on Southern Nazarene, legendary in its own right. Nice little break there. Genesis Dotson puts that one up. Working their way forward to midfield. Ball gets moved out quickly from Liberty Cawthorn, but goes to the ground in this rain. Reed back gets a hold of it, but it was a knock-on. So a referee a Jones here from the Ohio Rugby Referee Society is going to bring up a first scrum of the game to Southern Nazarene. Good pressure from the Crimson Storm. Little error creeping in there from Army, as we've noted all day. I've ever called more scrums than in this tournament <laughs> so far. 
It's the scrum aficionado weekend here in Boyd's, Maryland. Nice work there to get that one out to Cam Seal. Here comes Southern Nazarene. Southern Nazarene. Uatafe takes that one in. Telesi Uatafe, a nursing major from Euless, Texas. That's Southern Nazarene in Bethany, Oklahoma. Good tackle there from the Black Knights. Ball up into the hands of Cam Seal, the junior from Yukon, Oklahoma. Good pressure coming in from Army. Army holding that one up. Nice work out to this right-hand side. Ball gets up to Maya Hartnett from Meade, Kansas. Pressure again from that Army West Point defense. They're able to turn that one over. They've got a little bit of traffic on this left-hand side, but players starting to reset there. You see out to the right as that power comes through that they are well known for. Speed and finesse of the sevens game coming right up for you. Ball comes across from Army West Point. They've got a little wrap around there. Great program. They also played National Intercollegiate Rugby Association 15s. Nice step there from Trina. Uh, sorry, from Army West Point. And they touch that one down in the try zone. Army gets the first five points on the board. With the try. Nisha with the breakaway. Well worked try from West Point. We saw the wraparound and then pinning that Southern Nazarene defender and then Schaff wheels just able to shake away. And then the conversion is good as well, bringing an early lead seven points to nil to Army. And I've called a couple of wrong names here. There's some late jersey number changes from what I originally had for Army West Point. So in this quarterfinal, I will do my best here. And apologies for that. Army West Point to kick this one off. A long kick down. Southern Nazarene down 7-0. Take that one just outside their 22. Ball comes across for Southern Nazarene in the middle. Nice pickup off there. That is from Julia Riacana. Riacana has been excellent for this team. Ball up there to Grace McCune. Grace McCune, she's a first-year player out of Houston, Texas. Touches down five points, and Army looking strong again. Army with the back truck. Uh, you can see they're just enjoying themselves out there, playing together, getting to step away from West Point and playing rugby. Maybe not the weather conditions you would hope for, but they're loving it and then opening up this two try lead. 12 nil to kick off again, three minutes to go in this first half. Black Knights kick that one down. Southern Nazarene takes it at their 22. Southern Nazarene. Ball slips forward there off of the Uatafe pass. Uatafe, very talented player. Ball rolls to the try zone. Army West Point right down on that. Another try awarded. Excellent work there from the Black Knights, capitalizing on everything. And that's Jillian Scott going to put that one down. Jillian Scott, the senior from Raleigh, North Carolina. Five points here in the quarterfinals at the Collegiate Rugby Championship. Great awareness and heads up play from West Point. Jillian Scott with the wheels to chase that kick down and dot it for five points in the try zone. But West Point are just coasting through this first half. They look super comfortable. They're playing well together and they're looking very dangerous. I mean, you have to kind of expect from a, you know, a military academy, the weather is no bother. <laughs> the conditions aren't a big deal. They are here to play, and they're here to play with intensity, and that's what they are doing at the moment as Army West Point gets us going. The Black Knights again kick to the other side this time. Southern Nazarene lets it bounce. That's dangerous. Ball getting swatted back. Good defense coming in. Fakahua took that one in the ground. That one now at their 22, looking for some room that may not be there against a team like Army West Point. Inside their own half they go. Southern Nazarene, some talented players, had the pleasure to call on some all-star teams. A little under it right now as a loose ball comes up and Army West Point scores again. That looks like Sydney Schaff in for a double 
again, it's those little errors creeping in from Southern Nazarene, but you see the pressure that Army are applying. They're up in the passing lanes. Southern Nazarene, they need to be a threat with the ball in hand. They need to create some depth. Otherwise, Army will continue to flood the space, take it over. Little turnovers like that award them five points every time. Long kick from Army West Point this time. And Army takes that one on another kick. There's 30 seconds to go in this first half. They're ready up by 22. Nearly put in an interception there. Chipped forward off the ground from the Southern Nazarene players. Crimson Storm making a rare visit to the 22 of Army West Point. See what they decide to do this one. They're going to come back. That Scott again. Scott has some open room to run. Scott shows the ball. Scott goes around. Fakahua. She is across the 40, across the 22. She's got Uatafe chasing her Uatafe, the nursing major from Trinity High School, played with Dallas Youth Rugby, eventually hauls this down, and that's going to be halftime. 22 to nil, Army over Southern Nazarene. We'll be back with second half action right after this. We don't play with sticks, bats, or gloves. We don't wear shoulder pads or helmets. We keep playing when it hurts. And we leave everything on the field. What we wear must be built for our game. Since 1979, we've been searching for perfection. We've been thinking, sketching, and designing. We've been building, assembling, and strengthening. been cutting, shaping, and painting. We've created strength and beauty time and again. Our machines are made for one thing, the perfect hit. We're back with this premier quarterfinal. It is a big lead here for Army West Point. John coach. Broker with Abby Gostitis bringing you the second half of this quarterfinal. Abby, it has been all Army so far. All Army, and I think head coach Bill LeClerc will be pleased with his team's performance. I reckon giving Jillian Scott a little bit of grief at halftime for not scoring that fifth try, just holding these women to such a high standard as they look to finish off this game with a substantial lead in the second half. And they would play the winner of Virginia Tech, Penn State, if scores continue this way. Here's Uatafe. She's a talented player in her own right. She gets a little room. Ball out to the edge here for Southern Nazarene. The Crimson Storm is definitely looking to perform here, but that one chip forward. Army West Point again. That one is Cecilia Alice, the first-year player from Charleston, South Carolina. That ball goes out down there. We're going to come back. It's going to be it looks like a line out here for Southern Nazarene, but deep in their own end. Cecilia. Looks like the referees are having a discussion about the outcome, depending on if that ball went into touch in the try zone or just before, or maybe rolled out the back. But a lot of heads up play here seen from West Point, kicking those messy 
falls on the ground. A different tactic, maybe in dry conditions, where you would opt to pick it up or dive on it. We're going to come back for a scrum for Southern Nazarene. 95 meters to go. If they want to put some points on the board, that would be a challenge for them. Army will look to apply a lot of pressure here. Potentially playing seven up, just coming up super hard, super did to force Southern Nazarene to kick out of their own half. And Southern Nazarene, as you said, under a lot of pressure here. A lot of very talented players on the Southern Nazarene team. Not sure they've seen this type of defensive pressure that you're talking about, Abby. But that one, no matter, it's going to come down into the hands of Army West Point. Army West Point. I take that one. That is Cargyle, Kaylee Cargyle, but it comes back there to Alice. And Cecilia Alice from Wando High School, a USA South Panther, touches down and Army extends their lead a minute and a half into this second half. And that try all started from that contest at the line out. I love when teams throw someone up, just providing that distraction for the scrum half, throwing that ball into her team, and then Army come and away with it, Jordan set the platform, no good, and Army. two passes, two rucks later, they're in for their first try of this second half. Kick to come here from Army. High hanging one there for Southern Nazarene to deal with. Ball comes loose and spills forward. So it's going to be an advantage here for West Point. They need no introduction to go forward quickly with that one. Walbrink gets a hold of it. Walbrink gets that ball in. And Cargyle is going to be in the, in the distributor position, but she's going to see this pace herself. She's got Uatafe to beat, and she can. And Kaylee Cargyle, the senior from Spokane, Washington, mechanical engineering major, is going to touch down for another five points. The Army is running away with this quarterfinal. Kaylee Cargyle, one of the captains on this team, just brings that experience, that leadership on and off the field and getting five points to her name here. But Julia Rickena in the pack lane, getting that turnover initial from Southern Nazarene. And Army, again, we've already spoken about it, but the teamwork, the effort, the support, it's all there. They really come together and are proving themselves in this quarterfinal matchup. That one rolls over and rolls towards touch. Three and a half minutes to go in the second half. Plenty of opportunity here for Army to extend this lead. Southern Nazarene, of course, will be looking to move into the other brackets where they remain a strong contender. Army looking to contest again. No easy ball for Southern Nazarene as they win it again. Here comes Army on, on attack. Great work there from Army West Point. They get one out. Alice made that pass out. They're going to push back just a little bit of wrap around there from Walbrink. Walbrink from Sacramento, California moves that one out into the hands of Schaff. Schaff has found some spaces taken down by two players as she makes a half break there. Uatafe being one of those. Nice break. A little over the top ball here and here yeah. comes Alice. Yeah, right Cecilia Alice, the engineering management major. Touches down a second try here at the Collegiate Rugby Championship in the Women's Premier Quarterfinals. That's a double for Alice, as you see her and Julia Rickena just having a little rush, and Julia being one of the captains, as you see the conversion cruise through the rights, bringing that lead to even further ahead, 41 points for Army. Seriously cumulative score here, and Army still going. You see them get, getting into position, ready to restart. Cargyle gets that ball going again inside their own 22 are this Southern Nazarene team. Pressure just coming on now. We have about a minute and a half on the game clock. Uatafe looking to make something here. Uatafe, tremendous player. 
Ball up, however, into the hands of Army West Point yet again. A little spin move there from McCune from Houston, Texas. She gets the ball back. She's on the edge. She's across the 22. Little power keeping her feet. They're going to keep this one alive and move it quickly. Looking strong with this interplay. Walbrink gets that ball out. Little step inside. They've got some runners outside here if they need them. Alice has scored a couple, so she's going to let somebody else join the fun. Jillian Scott steps in, steps out, and Jillian Scott is going to be the recipient of this try. And Jillian Scott, the senior from Raleigh, North Carolina, Raleigh Charter High School. Another five points. That has to be one of the tries of the day. It touched every single person's hands and on Army's team. The footwork from Jillian Scott to top Probably it all off. Just beautiful interplay from West Point. West Point just really making a statement here. 30 seconds on the game clock. You said they will play the Winner of Penn State versus Virginia Tech coming up in a little while. And the other quarterfinals, Brown, Northern Iowa, Michigan, Navy. After this game, we are going to switch to the first game of the men's premier division. It's going to be Notre Dame College taking on East Carolina. The Falcons versus the Pirates. Then we'll hand over the mic to another part of our great broadcast crew for the weekend. As the ball comes up to Southern Nazarene, Jilliland. Takes that one, another spilled ball. Ball rolling back to the 22 of Southern Nazarene. They're headed towards touch. They get it in there. Clock is over 14, but assistant referee says that was actually not out. So another opportunity here to score. Across they come. It is Army West Point. Army West Point put that one in. Again, right on the spot there. No problem. Try awarded. They extend their lead. And this one has been all West Point all the time. And what a victory it is for these women from Army. Looks like the conversion goes off the post. Cargyle upset with that one. But a massive victory from Army, 53 points to zero. And that has been the first quarterfinal in the women's premier division. Three more to come to see who continues to move on. We're going to start off the men's premier division in just a minute. Stick with us, won't you? We are the bind, we are the set, we are the squeeze, we are the hit, we are Rhino, home of the scrum.
And a good afternoon to you rugby fans. It is the start of the men's premier division here at the Collegiate Rugby Championships brought to you by National Collegiate Rugby. John Broker with Abby Gastitis bringing you this first matchup before we hand it back over to our colleagues. We've been calling some of this great women's premier division. Now we're switching over. Abby, 32 teams, knockout rugby in the men's East Carolina versus Notre Dame to start us off. This is going to be an exciting bracket. It's a massive weekend of Rugby Sevens here in Maryland. 32 teams across three days. However, every match counts. So huge opportunity here. We have Notre Dame College and East Carolina, as you mentioned, running out to take the pitch for their first match. That opening game, there's always a lot of nerve. So whoever can hone in, focus on on the task at hand will come out victorious. It's going to be East Carolina in the purple and in the lighter blue is going to be Notre Dame College, the Falcons. Notre Dame College coached by Jason Fox, Hugh Johnston from South Euclid, Ohio, and East Carolina, the Pirates coached by Ryan Miracle, Robert Wolf, and Brody Andrews ready to get going. It looks like it is going to be Notre Dame College. They're ranked number one in the South bracket for this, and number eight is East Carolina. So on paper, it's a big ass, but as Abby's been saying, this is knockout rugby. Anything Thing can happen here. It's a wet and rainy day here in Maryland at the Maryland Soccer Complex. National Collegiate Rugby's men's premier division is underway as Lachlan McDonald hangs one up for the Falcons over the Pirates. Pirates come down with it quick. Archie Kaloff takes that one, but taken away quickly. Stephen Herbst. Stephen Herbst is more from Johannesburg, South Africa for NDC. Notre Dame College takes that. They move it quickly. Pressure coming in from the Pirates. They are here to play. Bryce Long takes that one back. Bryce Long, the junior from Apex, North Carolina, went to Apex Friendship School. Knock on, however, no advantage gain. We're going to go back here for a scrum to the Pirates just outside their 22. And it was a beautiful high-hanging restart scene there from Notre Dame College. Great opportunity for them to come up and apply pressure. East Carolina did well to hold on to that and then a little air creeping in. So first attacking opportunity for them just outside their own 22. Little bobble of the ball in the rain here. NDC puts the pressure on, but it's going to come back out into the hands of Spencer Waugh. Kick there. Interesting tactic in the rain from East Carolina. Keep this Falcons team deep in their own end, and they do. Ball is inside their 22, up into the hands of Remy Thompson from Oxford, England. Ball moved to the edge, looking at the wing here. Good stop and start run. Nice footwork across come the Falcons. That was Xavier Allen. Xavier Allen towards the line with a long-range try. First five points to Xavier Allen, the junior from Toledo, Ohio. Notre Dame College getting on the board first through Allen, as you mentioned. He's such a threat with ball in hand. He has a striking presence on the pitch, but he has the wheels. He has the physicality and that evasiveness to just get by the defense and then the wheels to finish it off, opening up this first match. A two-time track MVP in high school, certainly showing it there. In this first matchup, as that one goes, referee says it's no good. So we remain 5 nil. Two minutes gone in this first matchup of many. There's 32 teams in this division playing first round today. First thing tomorrow morning will be all of the second round, a round of 16 matchups for the men's premier division. As we're set to get into the way here, Lachlan McDonald yet again from Brisbane, Australia. Pirates looking to take that one in, but great work to force a penalty. And here comes NDC, the number one seed in the south again. Nice break. Looking for the offload. It doesn't appear. A referee says that player released and got back up, so it's not a problem. Herbst, the sports management major, pops that one up into the hands of Asher Hannon. Hannon. Gets it just outside the five meter. They got runners across. Hugh Johnston puts it out there into the hands of big Lachlan McDonald. Lachlan McDonald looks around, decides he's going to take it himself. And Lachlan McDonald, a sophomore from Ameris College, Ashgrove, touches down for the Falcons. They're up by 10. 
Lachlan McDonald. We've seen him restart twice now. Both beautiful kicks. And then he gets a try to his name. What strong vision that rugby IQ is really present in this side. He sees the gap open up, uses a little bit of footwork, and then just cuts through the East Carolina defense. Played in Premier Rugby Sevens, one of the loonies team. Did McDonald? Just almost four minutes gone in this first half. First game of the men's Premier Division. Collegiate Rugby Championship. High hanging kick. Comes back down into the hands of Herbst. He's been a bit of a workhorse so far. Taking it into contact quite a bit. Ball coming across there from Rashad Jones Land from Twinsburg, Ohio. He hangs one back up. And settling back in, getting the ball to Asher Hannon. A little wraparound moves. The space appears, and no worries there for Hugh Johnston, the senior from Sunshine Coast, Australia. Also spent some time in Singapore. Touches down for NDC, and they continue to push their lead. Notre Dame College with all the experience, these international players coming together here really putting on a show so far in Maryland and making it look so easy. They're very well connected, reading off one another well, and then they have that athleticism to get into the try zone as well. NDC looking strong in this first half. They are in the south bracket, so they would arrival the east eventually in a semifinal, which could set up a tasty, wheeling Notre Dame College semifinal. Both very strong teams. Everything goes. And as it is on paper, there's always those upsets. But exciting weekend of a rugby coming. Wheeling will play later on today against Howard University. Maybe the first HBCU to take part in this event. Hell, like a hanging kick there over the Pirates. Pirates under pressure. Pirates get that one away, but they're at their own 22. A long way to go against a very savvy Notre Dame College team showing it so far. Ball comes back into the hands of Spencer Waugh. Waugh makes it across the 22, able to recycle Wanting to go through the phases here, uh, may look for a kick, but hanging onto the ball are the Pirates. Little offload there. Take a step. AJ Minta. Staying with the ball are East Carolina. Just about a minute to go in the first half of the game clock. Trying to move the ball into some width here. They had it, but they come back around for a wraparound. The Falcons will want to pounce on that. Have done. Player has to take it to the ground. Will be able to recycle. One-on-one -on, -one on the outside here. Little step, little show to the outside. And Remy Thompson from Oxford, England touches that one down. Another five points for a very strong-looking Notre Dame Falcons team. NDC sharing the love a lot of players getting their names on the score sheet early on in this match. Still in the first half as they take that commanding lead. But it's the pressure from the defense. East Carolina not able to make anything happen. And then a little turnover. And it's quick ball to the edge. A 1v1 can't be stopped. 24 at nil as time is winding out in this first half. Shot at Jack Whitney there, junior from Charlotte, North Carolina. Played at Providence High School, construction management major now at East Carolina. ECU, the Pirates, kick coming from Notre Dame College. We're over seven minutes on the game clock. Looking off to that right-hand side are the Pirates looking to get something working. Ball not going to hand. Big pressure again from this Falcons team. Isolated player. Little break they're looking for right there. It doesn't happen. That's Q Porter. East Carolina, again, just outside the 22. Keeping the phases going. They have a group of three there. Trying to move the ball to the outside, but it slips out on the ground. So advantage here for Notre Dame College. A referee is going to whistle that. That's the end of our first half. Big lead here for NDC, 24-0. We'll be back with second half action in just a minute.
Welcome back. We are the second half here. Notre Dame College Falcons, a large lead, 24-0 over the East Carolina Panther or Pirates. Pardon me. Ball goes long into the hands of a waiting Falcons player. It hits the ground. Rain wreaking a little havoc here. John Brecker with Abby Gostitis for the end of our first block of games. We handing it back over to Wendy Young and Darian Lovelace after this one. Called some exciting matches. This is the start of the men's premier division. Abby, this NDC team is looking strong as they move ahead in this tournament. NDC definitely some favorites to make it to that final four. And if you're their coach at halftime, you're just telling them come continue to apply that pressure. They're getting turnovers. Their restarts are so difficult for East Carolina that they're getting a lot of those balls back and making it into the try zone. But for East Carolina, just settle down, build the pressure, hold on to that ball. Penalty against Notre Dame College will help right now. Ball coming out for East Carolina. They've got some runners. They move it out there to Bryce Long. Bryce Long put the little wraparound pass in there. Look like Waugh. They move that one out to Porter. Porter near the touch line, but doesn't go in. They're going to come back across. Whitney, the playmaker, gets rid of that one. Spencer Waugh from Hope Mills, North Carolina. Takes that one in, but penalty against this East Carolina team for an infraction at the breakdown there. And NBC puts it a long rolling kick onto the wet ground. See if they can get this one again going forward. That one seems to slip forward. So East Carolina taking it. Referee's going to come back for the advantage. It will be, should be a scrum here for East Carolina, I believe. Agreed. Should be a scrum as Lachlan McDonald attempted to slide and pick up that ball in these wet conditions. A little knock on. So it will be East Carolina ball just inside their own half. You see the fly half set up almost directly behind. It's so critical for that 9-10 pass. You want to get it cleanly out to your fly half so that they can read the space, make a decision, and have a go. Ball to come in here from East Carolina. Waugh doing the honors. Moves the ball back. They're at their 22. Pressure coming on them. Looking to go to that width. Tackled is Archie Kaloff. Ball up to Whitney. Looking for a little offload there. It doesn't materialize. Ball knocked forward by Wistar Allen. So we're going to come back for a scrum for NDC. Notre Dame College, great attacking position just outside the Pirates 22. Dangerous time here for East Carolina. NDC have threats across the pitch and the bet about a scrum is if you're in the back line, you're sucking in four of the defenders into that small space, and you have a 3v3 with almost an entire pitch width to play with. It's a great shot for a one-on-one -on -one battle. From the tight end side come the Falcons through Christian Dickens. Dickens, the junior from Raleigh, North Carolina. Big scrum wheel around there. Putting on the pressure be another scrum here for Notre Dame College. Point differential doesn't matter, so Notre Dame College can use some reserves here. Three minutes to go in this first matchup as they move on. Notre Dame lost a couple of influential seniors. Please go, Abby. As you actually wield a scrum in sevens, uh, driving from one side, so they did. Notre Dame College end up with the ball in hand either way. Michael Yaboa, in the meantime, takes the ball for Notre Dame College, and he is away. Yaboa, the senior from Edison, New Jersey, went to Piscataway High School, calls himself the Intercept King, and it takes it against a run of play there, scores a try. Well, need to intercept as they have. Did see his one on one ability show and interjecting into this strong NDC team in this half. 29 0, two and a half minutes to go. 
And after this, we are going to have Wendy Young and Darian Lovelace bringing the rest of the women's quarterfinals. So you're going to get to see Penn State versus Virginia Tech, Brown versus Northern Iowa. Interspersed with some men's premier games. Long kick there from Notre Dame rolls out. Kickoffs have really impressed me. Um, Notre Dame College, Donald, spot on time and again. This collegiate level, you see kicks like on the series and they take years and years to develop. You heard it there from an experienced Abby Gostitis. Ball gets knocked forward there, it looks like, from one of these Notre Dame College players. A rare mistake. Ball comes to Wistar Allen. Wistar Allen, the junior from High Point, North Carolina, gets it to one of his teammates there, Connor Butzin, but big pressure as usual from the Falcons. Ball nearly mishandled by Robbie Jarman. Jarman from Charlotte, the business major. A little offload from NDC on the turnover. Still in possession of the ball. Nice step inside and out from Hugh Johnston. He gets it out to Yaboa. Yaboa's been in the try zone already. Yaboa's going to get in there again. 5'6, 165. Yaboa touches down another one for this Notre Dame Falcons team. It's a double for him. It's a commanding lead and what will be a victory with just 30 seconds left on the clock for NDC. Again, East Carolina trying to force a little too much. They're getting too close to the defensive line and then trying to offload or pass to their teammates when NDC's defense has been so strong. They're coming up, they're closing the space, and they're really on the forefront on attack and defense throughout this match. It's no good. So we're at 34 to nil. We're at time on the game clock here, but Notre Dame College and one more opportunity here as they hang another high one up there. If any points will come from East Carolina, it's going to happen now. Missing that kick, not going to help out too much. Ball down into the hands of the Pirates. So Blonsky moves that one across. They're stuck in their own end. See what they can make out of this. Ball pushed across, but winds up towards Notre Dame College. Referee spots a referee sees it, but penalty against East Carolina for that. We can't end on the game of an intentional knockdown. So we're going to come back for a penalty for Notre Dame College. We'll see what they decide to do with this. They're going to play just a little bit. They're going to keep this one going, practicing one of their set moves. Player down and up there for Notre Dame College. Notre Dame College going to keep this one alive. There might be another five points on the board for them. Aguirre gets that. Good ball work across. A nice receiving pass there. Able to hold on to it. Good tackle from East Carolina. Hugh Johnston has to do some work. They're needing to get somebody in there. Comes in McDonald's form. A little step, a little go inside there from Christian Dickens. Pop up and no problem. It's going to be Lachlan McDonald to seal this one out for Notre Dame College. Kick to come, but just some more good work and a little misdirection. Takes him into the dry zone at the end of this first matchup of the men's premier division. Notre Dame College making that try scoring much more difficult. A little bit of white line fever, I think, from a few individuals, but they get the job done. A great win for them as they move on throughout this tournament. And that is it for that one. Notre Dame College moves on here in the south brackets. Going in the other direction is East Carolina. For Abby Asitis, this is John Broker. We are going to hand this over to Wendy Young and Darian Lovelace. Women's Premier Quarterfinals, some more men's first-round matches coming up. We'll be back later on. Enjoy your rugby.
CBD American Shaman. Find a location near you today. And a good morning to you rugby fans. Welcome to beautiful New Orleans, Louisiana. We have seven rugby action coming for you all day. Blow up the spot, then we run it. Ready or not, here we coming. Somebody better say a prayer for me. Tonight may get a little crazy. You can meet me. Handles that one. Finally move it out. It looks like they are in the try zone again, extending their lead. Welcome back, everybody, to the Collegiate Rugby Championships. We are here with the National Collegiate Rugby, who is putting on a performance here today in Maryland. We are continuing on through this Women's Premier League bracket after Army was just able to beat Southern Naz Nazarin. It'll now be Penn State, though, after they dominated against Montana versus Virginia Tech. It'll be a pretty big contest. I'm joined here by Wendy Young. My name is Darian Lovelace. We'll be bringing you live rugby action here as we enter into this women's premiere. Thanks, Darian. Really excited for this next women's premier quarterfinal. We'll have Penn State receiving in the blue strip and Virginia Tech in their white and red, typical colors for them. We're whittling down these premier teams from 16 teams down to these quarterfinals, so eight quarterfinal teams, and then we'll go to their semifinals. So everything's on the line for these teams. Obviously, both teams have won their first round, but Virginia Tech in the driver's seat right now. They scored early and often in their first match and looking to do so against the very experienced Penn State Lions. We saw a lot of action from that woman in the first match. A couple of tries from her, Sydney Gaskin, an absolute standout for the Hokies. And they are out to the edge, looking for a little bit of space on the outside. Good tackle from behind by the Lions. And a beautiful poach. Match official for this game is Jacob Anthony Kawaz from the Utah Rugby Referee Society. And a first penalty. Penn State going to go quick. We saw them pushing the tempo in the first game. They do such in this game as well. Led by... Coach Kate Daly, longtime Eagle, played for Penn State herself. Always one to push that tempo as well. Finding a little bit of space on the outside now. The tackle attempt from the behind and the offload not quite to hand. Still with Penn State, though, no knock on. The weather has been a problem today. It's cold in Maryland, windy and very rainy. You can see that precipitation on the screen Both teams finally starting to get a little bit risky there while they try and work it edge to edge. They've got a lot of speed out there with Gaskin on Virginia Tech, but also Sayig on Penn State. It's quite the contest out there on the edge. Keep an eye out. Virginia Tech going backwards a little bit on that scrum. Now getting on to the front foot. Saw lots of carries. That's Margaret Wright. She scored one try in her first match, but stolen by the Lions. They're going to go out to the left, looking for that wing-on-wing -wing battle that you just mentioned, Darian. Who's got the upper hand? Now seeing a little bit of space on the right. Beautiful two-on-one. Not quite enough room for White to get around the edge, though. And Penn State just going back and forth. The patience here, phenomenal. Poacher in for Virginia Tech. Told to be cleared out by the referee, though. And that ball just behind the intended recipient, but no knock on. It's into the try, try scorer's hands. That's White. And now seeing a bit more fluidity from Penn State. Lots of possession for them. Cranking up the phrases. But playing mostly in the middle of the pitch. There it is. Now the opening on the outside. What a tackle that is by Gaskin. 
And now the poach coming, but still not there. Penn State now outside the 22. And again, finally crossing that 22. Virginia Tech defense bending but not breaking. Now, finally, so many faces. The knock on. The work that just went into that whole defensive series from Virginia Tech is something that we should all give a round of applause to. They worked really hard to get into that space on defense and the breakdown, but just not able to hold their weight against Penn State that have such strong runners. The thing with defense, though, is that if you stay connected, you stay linked up, and you continue to apply pressure, chances are you're going to generate a turnover. Virginia Tech, beautiful defense against Penn State. And Penn State holding that ball for approximately two minutes. And just as you were saying, Darian, Virginia Tech having to defend for just that long. It's exhausting work. But now they get a chance at this restart with the scrum. A little bit of a pressure from Penn State, but not able to hook it back. So it stays with the Hokies. Inside their own 22, trying to work their way out. But Penn State not afraid to ruck here. They've stolen it. Now it's a up front ball short. Seven meters out, looking to go left. Lots of room, but double knock-ons there. It's cold hands, tough today. This Virginia Tech is a shorter a, a, a side with a little bit less experience when you look at their years. Lots of sophomores and freshmen and juniors where when you look at Penn State, a few more seniors, but not many. So young sides for these teams, but no strangers to the CRC tournament. And Virginia Tech again going to try to work out of their own end. They haven't crossed the 50 in a while. They've been on defense for most of the first half. This one coming straight back out of the tunnel with no hook. So referee Kawayas will reset this. Very shocking stuff to not have a single score happening in this first half. Penn State have the ability to. Virginia Tech, though, has a long way to go out of this end. Massive pressure coming on Virginia Tech now. Penn State Blue Jersey swarming them as they try to go from their own end goal. Good up front ball there. Getting them just a couple of meters. Now stolen by Penn State, but perhaps illegally done so. Yep, penalty to Virginia Tech. The tap and go. The attempted intercept, but it's going to be off those fingertips. Looks to be just a penalty. Referee not. Now going to the pocket for the cheese. This could prove critical in this match. As that player goes and sits down for two minutes. So now Virginia Tech getting that break they're looking for. They'll have a one player advantage. And about 10 seconds to go in this first half. Can they work it out of this deep end? They're going to go just straight hands. Trying to get it to Gaskin. It's a bounce pass, so she's got room on the outside. One defender, but no, the referee going to bring this back for a knock-on. Unlucky. She is one that could go the distance. That one hurt a little bit, especially whenever you lose a player. That's whenever you really want to put the foot on the gas. You want to get points on the board while they're down. A player for two minutes, especially Penn State, that's been so physical. Unfortunately, ref went for the cheese, and it's not Gouda. It's a stinky one. So now Penn State, a little bit of messy ball from the back of the scrum, but they're able to get it into the hands of Abo. She beats one. She beats Gaskin on the outside, and then she will be over for the first points of the match. Apparently Penn State is hungry despite getting dished the cheese. She didn't even need it. She rounded that corner so seamlessly. Gaskin, who is so fast on Virginia Tech, is not even able to catch her. That just shows the fitness that Penn State's got as they are finally able to get some points on the board, 5-0 over Virginia Tech. Conversion is good, so Penn State will 
go to the half, seven to zero. Stay with us, we'll have the second half for you in just a bit. you rugby fans welcome to beautiful new orleans louisiana we have seven rugby action coming for you all day look we up the spot then we run it ready and not here we coming somebody better say a prayer for me tonight may get a little crazy and with that one finally moving out it looks like they are in the dry zone again extending their lead play with our hearts. We don't play with sticks, bats, or gloves. We don't wear shoulder pads or helmets. We keep playing when it hurts. And we leave everything on the field. What we wear must be built for our game. It's time to take care of yourself and enjoy life again. CBD American Shaman has a full line of hemp-derived products to help you experience the fullness of life, whether it's a better night's sleep, relief from worries and tension, or just having fun. Consultants at CBD American Shaman will guide you on your journey. Visit Welcome back to the second quarterfinal in the Women's Premier Cup. Penn State with a slight lead, pouring at the buzzer, 7-0 to zero over Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech able to get this restart and get through that rain. Again, pouring down on these players. Less than ideal conditions causing issues like that. And have a scrum advantage. And then it's out to the tri floor fans at Cabo. Now the offload, and again, finding a seam on the outside, getting it down in the corner, data rested. Penn State finally able to get another round of points on the board against Virginia Tech right off of the bat. All cylinders flying now for the Lions as they get ready to enter into it. All of these points are going to be so crucial throughout this second half these are knockout rounds whoever gets the most points gets to continue on and this will be a tough conversion you can see those flags and and it does go wide penn state extend that lead to 12 to 0. they do have a yellow card for playing down one player with an intentional knock in the first half virginia tech not able to take advantage of that yet we did see an extended period in the first half where Penn State held the ball and ran two phases for about two minutes where v, Virginia Tech had to be on defense. Perhaps that fatigue starting to creep in. And a low, almost a grubber on the kick, picked up by Penn State. And now, driving it up, Price to our Abo. Again, getting those crucial meters for her side. And then into the hands of this woman who has just scored, Rudkin. Seeing her play a bit more on the wing in this map where she was in the centers before. And that's Fowler who is getting her major in meteorology. Perhaps she can tell us if the rain is going to stay for tomorrow. It does look like it might clear up as Penn State being driven back with that Virginia Tech defense again coming through. Finally just able to get a scrum here. Penn State's got some subs rolling in, some fresh legs. They're going to look to try and really exhaust all of their resources with this knockout round. Uh, you want to 
clock ticking towards us right Can now, you right? tech. Okay, great, cool. Good luck. Uh, anything Restart you? this just inside the state's okay, okay. meter, but it's hooked by the Lions. Gaining the advantage in that scrum. And then now out to the outside, to the long legs of Abo again. Defend, but brought into touch. Saved again, Virginia Tech line out. Virginia Tech just so determined here, not allowing a little bit of green grass for Penn State, but not allowing them to make it into the try zone, which is imperative as they enter into the last couple minutes of this match. They need to get some points on the board and they need to keep Penn State out of this end. And the winner of this match, if it stays as is, Penn State winning right now, will play Army in the first semifinal tomorrow afternoon. Army has blanked their teams and done very well so far in the tournament. 57-0 over Southern Nazarene and then 44 points over Aquinas as well. Army is looking unstoppable at this point, but Penn State facing a formidable opponent in Virginia Tech right now. Can they add some more points with this scrum? A beautiful hook right into the scrum half's hands. And out to the centers. And they are very quick to try to go to the outside because they've got all of this speed. Look at this speed from Abo again. This would be her second if she's able to touch it down. Sliding in. Whistle goes up. Arm goes up for the referee. Abo is doing a number for her team today. The Lions are just rolling with the pack. They are so connected, but they're also very individualistic in the sense that they know their strengths, they know their speed, they know their power runners, and they're building that connectivity. Virginia Tech just without the ball cannot get any points. Penn State, their journey here, winning a match earlier against Montana State, 29-7. We know they can score points where Virginia Tech had a squeaker, winning by 5-0 to zero over Michigan State. And Penn State looking very strong as we've got about two minutes left in this match. Unofficially, of course, the referee has the official time. But the Lions showing their experience. Abo does everything. She does the restart. She scores two tries. How is the Hokies take over? Working inside their own 40-meter line. Backwards, says the referee. Switch direction, seeing maybe a little bit of space on the outside, but it's a bouncing ball into the Lions' hands. Just attacking right outside the 22. Going to go out to who else? Abo again. Beats Gaskin on the outside once. Now gets the offload to Rudkin. Just short. Working inside that five-meter line. But a penalty against the Penn State, against the Lions. Virginia Tech goes quickly all the way up to the 22. That's Hendren on the run. And then now pressure coming from Penn State. Trying to get it into the wings' hands. But a knock on there, knock on. knocked by Penn State. So it'll be a Virginia Tech scrum, last couple of seconds of this match. Yeah, Virginia Tech will unfortunately watch the seconds tick away as Penn State seemed to be running away with this one. Still with the scrum to come, Virginia Tech are going to have to play some defense to keep Penn State out of the try zone. So that's where they've wanted to be this whole game. Has been the tail of Penn State with all the possession and all the territory as they pick it up from the base of the scrum. Get around to the outside. It's Sayeg again. Thumbs up from the assistant referee, and Penn State will add a bit more to their score line. Penn State definitely happy with that win. They put on a performance and really showed their ability to connect, but they also showed a lot of depth and an ability to reload. We haven't seen that much across the board in the women's premiere, so kudos to them, but Virginia Tech did put on a defensive effort. It just won't be enough against this Lions side. 
Congratulations to Penn State moving on to the semifinals to face Army. Up next, we will have another men's premier match between number two, Mary Washington, and number seven, James Madison. Stay with us for more action. It's time to take care of yourself and enjoy life again. CBD American Shaman has a full line of hemp-derived products to help you experience the fullness of life, whether it's a better night's sleep, relief from worries and tension, or just having fun. Consultants at CBD American Shaman will guide you on your journey. Visit findcbdnow.com for a location near you. Findcbdnow.com. CBD American Shaman. Life is better with the feather. In our game, we play with our hearts. We don't play with sticks, bats, or gloves. We don't wear shoulder pads or helmets. We keep playing when it hurts. And we leave everything on the field. What we wear must be built for our game. This is an old ad. I was a referee back then. This is like 12 years old. Since 1979, we've been searching for perfection. We've been thinking, sketching, and designing. We've been building, assembling, and strengthening. We've been cutting, shaping, and painting. We've created strength and beauty time and again. Our machines are made for one thing, the perfect hit. We are the crouch, we are the bind, we are the set, we are the squeeze, we are the hit. We are Rhino, home of the scrum. It's an early penalty against James Madison. James Madison coming in ranked seventh in the South and Mary Washington ranked second. On paper, a tough matchup, but that's what day one seventh is all about. Getting some space on the outside. He's got lightning underneath his boots. Going to go across the line is Owen Flannery touching this one down for an early try for James Madison. Points coming very early for this side. And apologize, I think I said James Madison scored. Mary Washington has scored. And now the conversion. Quite a bit of condensation on our cameras, making it difficult. Lots of rain at the complex. Precipitation has been an issue all weekend. So Mary Washington taking an early lead. The try for Connor Faster, Faster. And a deep restart. James Madison having to work out of their own end from their own five meter.
Just feeling it out. Now going for a half gap. Trying for that loop around pass, but just being pinned down inside their own five. Maybe a show and go for the kick, but deciding to hold it in. The Bulldogs under immense pressure. And just not able to release this defensive pressure. Now finding a bit of space on the outside, but there's three striped jerseys there. The tackle is made. They've made it up to the 22-meter line, though. Scrum half under immediate pressure as well. And a nice show and go. Finally getting them across the 22. Now they can take a little bit of a breath as they continue the attack. But just that relentless defensive pressure coming. Now penalty for knock on an offsides. Player in front. And Mary Washington will take over, crossing that 22-meter line. But that one deemed to have been forward by match official Adam Falk out of the Society of Iowa Rugby Referees. And the try scorer early on, Connor Faster, sophomore, 20 years old. He's in business administration. As James Madison looking to work out of their own end again. Big pressure coming in the scrum. Intended receiver again swallowed by those striped jerseys. James Madison just struggling to find any free space. Now they put the boot to it, seeing nobody behind. It's going to dribble into touch for a line out. And hearing from our camera operators that some of those passes that are going forward is because it's very strong wind out there. Sometimes when we can see the flags, we can see that. But again, the weather just not optimal this weekend. Very cold, 50s and rainy, and now the wind has picked up. So you can see why some of these passes look a bit wonky as Mary Washington going backwards, finding his way out of that tackle, though crawling on the ground, but then knocking it on. James Madison will take over. Falk putting that whistle to his mouth, thinking about something, but then not calling anything. James Madison still rumbling. This is the first time they've passed the 50. Now a bit of space on the outside. Looping oh, offload. Absolutely beautiful inside the 22, but just into touch. Much better from James Madison, though. James Madison showing Madison. so much promise here as the number seven seed. They're just continuing on and doing the basics correctly, making sure the ball goes to hand. But that eighth defender, the sideline, they do not miss. It's so crucial that off of those long line breaks that you cut back in to try and find your support. Unfortunate as Mary Washington is able to gather this line out. They will, and they're going to carry it out to the 22. They haven't played much out of their own end. Having to do so now, but lead 7-0 to zero with about a minute and a half left in this half. Nice switching, long looping switch. And coming back to Falk for a penalty. James Madison penalized. And Mary Washington going up the edge of the pitch. Kicking it over the top. It's the try score that comes up with it. It's faster. He potentially is faster as he does bring this one back down for his side. Going to go out to the edge. Big fend there. Beats one. Finally brought to the deck. A quick off the base. And Mary Washington's going to go across that whitewash again, sliding over for another five points. The first lady would be proud of that play. I mean, just the heads up. The rec wasn't even set. They are so quick over the ball and so fast to recognize space. They saw that James Madison was really having to regather after multiple line breaks by Mary Washington. That left their wing completely open. He maintained his depth, was patient. Now they get another point on the board with a conversion to come. 
And conversion sails wide again. You get that glimpse of the flags. They are just uh, flowing in the breeze out there. So inclement weather, the story of the game today. But all Mary Washington so far in this first half, about 20 seconds to go on our unofficial clock. Of course, Adam Falk has the official time on his wrist, and he will let us know when that has expired. But Mary Washington piling on the points here. It's a high restart. Going to James Madison hands, but then off their hand. So it's an advantage knock on, but not able to quite gather that in. Sebastian Shireman not able to quite, quite, quite get that one. So we'll have a comeback for the scrum. And actually, that's halftime. So Mary Washington up 12 to 0 over James Madison. Stay with us. We'll be back with second half action. Yeah, I kept leaving space for you, and I was like, what's that? Second half of our second men's Premier Cup match. Mary Washington in the driver's seat with 12 points over James Madison. But we have seen matches already today where the, the script has been flipped. Big kickoff into the hands of Mary Washington. This is the first try score. He is absolutely blazing across that line. One to beat. Those pink boots look like they're going to cross that whitewash, and they do. This is Connor Faster touching down for his second try. I mean, he was running so fast, it looked like it wasn't even raining anymore. He grounds the corner, sees the heads up. It's his ability to kind of move the ball, move the defender with his hand. And then he just tucks the ball, continues to pump his legs. It's almost like he glides over the top. James Madison is trying to regather. They don't have the angle on speed like that. Decides to go ahead and dot it down right in front of the six. Mary Washington, just all gas, no brakes. Connor, 20 years old, only a sophomore, will be a standout for years to come for Mary Washington as they drive this restart very, very deep. Looks like it'll be a line out or possibly, a, yeah, line out to James Madison deep in their own end. Not the position. But we appreciate you joining us today on the Rugby Network or on. YouTube, and of course, this broadcast is brought to you by Next Level Rugby. Have thrilling matches. We have women's quarterfinal coming up, more men's premiere as James Madison playing in their own end goal, always dangerous. But more matches for you this afternoon as we're eliminating teams and getting down to quarterfinals in the women. Now, James Madison just getting outside of their own 10 meters. Gonna pick and go from the base. Arriving players trying to get that ball from Mary Washington, but stays with the Bulldogs. And now a penalty. Ball carrier not releasing. And we do have one Mary Washington player down. Looks like they're gonna need to receive some medical attention. 
looked like he might have gotten dinged up a little bit in that last double tackle with Mary Washington, um, tackling the James Madison University player. JMU just not really doing themselves any favors by running the phases down here in this end. Shout out to our medical team staff who also has to endure the rain, who has to endure the rain with us. Make sure that we're healthy. Looks like it's going to be a little bit more time as they attend to this player. And Mary Washington is their first game of the day. We will see them in action later in the day. Coming up next, we have a women's quarterfinal between Brown and Northern Iowa. Then we switch back to men's premier, Kutztown and Nazareth. And then we'll go back to the final women's quarterfinal between Navy and Michigan before we round out the afternoon with a bit of men's premier in, on this field. Play restarts with just a few minutes to go in this match. Mary Washington slicing through that defense. It was a nice against the grain run and now they've got a three on two on the outside. Not able to quite do it as succinctly as they'd like now a switch. But getting closer on that five meter line. Gonna go himself from the base, the scrum half. Just a little kick off the boot. So now James Madison picks it up. This is better from them, more offloads. Still dangerous, but able to get them up closer to that 40 meter line. This is the most confident we've seen of JMU yet. They've been having to play out of their own end most of the match. Just moving it through the hands, testing the defense. And a penalty for JMU. So they go again. Nice little show and go. Finally crossing that 50 meter line. Now a hand in there. We'll have to see what the referee calls here. Forward pass. So scrum to Mary Washington. James Madison though showing a little bit of a zing in there as they are able to get about 60 meters out of their own end. We've seen that Mary Washington just put the pressure on them down here and rack up a lot of points. But now James Madison finally wanting a taste for that try zone as we enter into the last couple minutes of this match. And a lot of that came from Tyler Lopez wearing the six jersey for JMU sophomore, six feet, 190 pounds studying computer science. But this one's gonna stay with Mary Washington. And again, just the conditions, that wet, slippery banana. I was trying to look up wet metaphors and they weren't good for TV, so I won't bring you any more. I'm just gonna talk about wet bananas, which just seems weird, but it's where we are. We'll just be calling it the slip and slide all weekend, everybody. It's the slip and slide. Last few moments of this match, Mary Washington in control with 17 points. But a chance here for the Bulldogs to get on the board. Going to take it around the weak side. A favorite of all scrum halves. And then Mary Washington just in the way and just flattening there in defense. But now stolen and kicked through. It's a long end over end ball finally rolling into touch. JMU acting like they're thinking about the quick. They go for it. There is support back for it, but Mary Washington now on the hunt, knowing that they're isolated here. Going to take it from the base again. Switching directions. Beautiful footwork there, beating two defenders. Getting the offload to Lopez. Looking for that space on the outside. But through the hands, the pass just not where it needed to be, and eventually it's knocked on. And the clock only going in favor of Mary Washington right now. Just moments of greatness met by really harsh realities for James Madison. You see them walk to the scrum just with a little bit of exhaustion. They've worked continuously to try and find any gap in this Mary Washington defense. But unfortunately, with the ball not going to hands, with these amazing conditions that we will continue to talk about throughout the weekend. Just doesn't seem like James Madison is really able to find any success. 
And that is a quick release from the scrum. A loop to the short ball. Beautiful breaking through is David Fitzgerald. And he will cross and dive over for five more points for Mary Washington. I mean, that is chef's kiss. That is the epitome of a straight line run. We saw James Madison very worried about Mary Washington continuing to take the corner around them, but that straightening run, the thumbs up play, it's heads up play that he's able to recognize where he's supposed to go. James Madison had a couple hands on him, but with speed like that, looks like Mary Washington is gonna keep this lead. And David Fitzgerald, another young member of this Mary Washington freshman, 18 years of age, 5'11", 175 pounds, studying international business. A beautiful try by him. And we are into the red, so we're into the referee's watch. And there was time for this restart, so James Madison having one more chance here. That is going to be very dangerous and will probably warrant a check, and maybe we'll see some cheese. Yeah, Andrew Falk just showing that, or Adam Falk talking about the lift there. It's a danger of the double tackle, and they will receive a yellow card. Sebastian Shariam, the recipient there. And JMU looking for that last chance to get rid of that goose egg on their side of the scoreboard. Still running hard. I'm liking this more directness, but now the defense flooding in, responding to the direct running. And that extra roll there. And then now that Mary Washington defense again, just all over anything JMU tries to do. And that will more than likely be the full time. I believe we've got a penalty actually, so we'll continue play. Mary Washington can pile the points on if they so desire. Nice looping pass again. They ran this earlier. The line different, a little bit different this time. And now two on one on the outside. Beating one at the five meter line. What a beautiful offload that was. And flying over another try for Mary Washington. Just really doing a good job of utilizing their skills. We didn't see too much looping play from them, but they show their ability to work the ball and to generate space. Mary Washington, even with a man down, are still able to just work those angles, those straightening runs, get the arms free, and that's why they're able to come away with a win like this against James Madison. The conversion is wide, so Mary Washington will move on to the next round, defeating James Madison. Stay with us. We will have a women's quarterfinal coming up. It is Brown versus Northern Iowa.
for another women's premier quarterfinal. This time, number one ranked Brown versus number four, Northern Iowa. These teams had quite the journey to get here. I'm Wendy Young, and I'll be joined by Darian Lovelace, match official for this match, Alex Schaefer of the Potomac Rugby Referee Society. Northern Iowa will be in the purple, kicking off brown in the black and red. And these teams, as I mentioned, Brown winning over Kutztown 54 to zero, and then Northern Iowa winning 19 to 10 over Indiana. This is the West quarterfinal. We will have another women's quarterfinal in just a bit. Navy versus Michigan, the last quarterfinal. And we'll have some men's premiere as well. American Shaman. Find a location near you today. And a good morning to you rugby fans. Welcome to beautiful New Orleans, Louisiana. We have seven rugby action coming for you all day. Look, blow up the spot, then we run it. Ready or not, here we coming. Somebody better say a prayer for me. Tonight may get a little crazy. Handles that one, finally moving out. It looks like they are in the try zone again, extending their lead. Play with sticks, bats, or gloves. We don't wear shoulder pads or helmets. We keep playing when it hurts. And we leave everything on the field. What we wear must be built for our game. It's time to take care of yourself and enjoy life again. CBD American Shaman has a full line of hemp-derived products to help you experience the fullness of life. Whether it's a better night's sleep, relief from worries and tension, or just having fun, consultants at CBD American Shaman will guide you on your journey. Visit findcbdnow.com for a location near you. Findcbdnow.com. CBD American Shaman. Life is better with the feather. In our game, we play with our hearts. We don't play with sticks, bats, or gloves. We don't wear shoulder pads or helmets. We keep playing when it hurts. And we leave everything on the field. What we wear must be built for our game. Since 1979, we've been searching for perfection. We've been thinking, sketching, and designing.
we've been building, assembling and strengthening. We've been cutting, shaping and painting. strength and beauty time and again our machines are made for one thing the perfect hit we are the crouch we are the bind we are the set Brown looking like they're very dangerous here, just outside the five meter line, just short. What a tackle that was. To save that try. And now they're attacking again. They're right on the door. And this one will be touched down by Captain America herself. What a score that was. Very good effort coming in from Brown as they continue to extend their lead now 12 to zero over Northern Iowa. And a low kick on that conversion attempt. Referee Alex Schaefer of this one, Potomac Rugby Referee Society. Brown in early control, 12 to zero of this match. Northern Iowa in that purple jersey again and Brown in that black and red. Brown coached by Rosalind True, Bridget Khalil, and Kittery Ryu's Wagner. And North Iowa coaches Megan Flanagan, Casey Anderson, Eileen Lib, and Lynn Clyer. Women's quarterfinal. Winner moves on. A loser goes down to the challenge brackets. And a restart, just dribbling into kick. So now Northern Iowa will have to work out of their own 22. Yeah, Coach Coach Chow actually able to win a CRC in 2017 due to being able to get her kicks down into this end. And as we see Brown almost using that tactic yet again, it's important to make sure that you field these kickoffs, especially down here against the number one seeded team. Possession is your number one friend here, and I... And as we say that, it looks like teams will both go to the half. Brown going to take that lead 12 to 0 over Northern Iowa. Stay with us as we bring you second half action. American Shaman. Find a location near you today. And a good morning to you rugby fans. Welcome to beautiful New Orleans, Louisiana. We have seven rugby action coming for you all day. Look, blow up the spot, then we run it. Ready or not, here we coming. Somebody better say a prayer for me. Tonight may get a little crazy. Handles that one, finally moving out. It looks like they are in the try zone again, extending their lead. Second half of this quarterfinal between Brown and Northern Iowa. Brown in the seat, 12 to 0 in this West quarterfinal. We already know who in the East is through. It's Army versus Penn State. And then we'll have one more women's quarterfinal in just a bit as well. As Alex Schaefer gets us restarted. And the Panthers 
receiving this one. And Panthers are in that purple and then brown in the black and red. And that the weather just being a factor this weekend. Very cold, very rainy. The wind just gusting out there as an early penalty for Brown. And they choose scrum. Fun story about um, Coach Rosalind Chow is in order to prepare us for a really wet, rainy game one weekend, she told all of the injured players to take buckets full of water and just douse them on us as we were tackling. So probably a tactic Brown might have used to help with their hands here. And looking like they may have put another player through, but great defense, almost stripping that one, but another penalty. They go quick, Brown. This woman is very dangerous, driving towards the line and just lunging over another try for Morgan Cunningham. Cunningham is just so attracted to that try zone. Her ability to look up and recognize the space is important, but it's her finish that gets her team and it continues to extend the lead. The leg drive of a total of 15 meters was what set her up. And now Brown just continuing on this trek, looking like they will probably get a spot in that final. Yeah, unless this trajectory changes... Brown with most of the possession and most of the territory. Northern Iowa not having much opportunity here, having to play a lot of defense. Brown does look like they are on their way to a semifinal. And they would face either Michigan or Navy. And that restart's not going to go 10, so it'll be a free kick to the Panthers. Don't make too much ground. They're immediately met by those black and red jerseys. Tempting that poach as well, but cleared out. And then a little show and go. This is better from the Panthers with possession. Trying to go around the outside. A little bit of a loose ball, but stays with the Panthers. Eventually, though, not quite to hand. Knocked on. It'll be a scrum to Brown. Looks like that was Emma Bacon, just not able to cook anything up there. It looked like Northern Iowa were about ready to build up some really good phases after rounding the corner in Stenerson Edwards. They can find the ball in her hands more often. Northern Iowa should be able to see some more success. I agree, we saw lots of action from Bacon in the first match of the day. Pretty silent here as Northern Iowa fly hacks that one and puts it through. Now it's into the hands of Cunningham, our try scorer, our double try scorer. And then this woman showed us her speed in the first match. Very, very dangerous. Those long, lanky legs just tackled at the line, but able to get that epic reach to get some more points for Brown. Just a really good individual effort there from Brown, especially off of a off of a kick that didn't really look like they had a whole lot of real estate to work with, but they're just able to manipulate the space so well. Northern Iowa comes across and almost is able to get this Brown player down before she touches it down, but it just isn't enough. And the conversion to boot. Brown now with a commanding 24-0 lead. Less than three minutes left in this match. We will have some men's premier action coming up right after this. Kutztown versus Nazareth from the Midwest bracket. But some of these... Brown players looking at their roster, majority sophomores, freshmen. So looking at their ages, 19, 18, 20 years old, young, young squad. And then the same for Northern Iowa, some juniors on there. But young, young squads here doing amazing things here at the CRCs. And we apologize for these technical difficulties. The, the weather at the grounds is making this very difficult for the broadcast crew. Plus, it seems like there's some, maybe some gremlins unplugging things when they shouldn't be. 
we're going to go to break and work on these technical issues. We'll be back. Sad face. In our game, we play with our hearts. We don't play with sticks, bats, or gloves. We don't wear shoulder pads or helmets. We keep playing when it hurts. And we leave everything on the field. What we wear must be built for our game. It's time to take care of yourself and enjoy life again. CBD American Shaman has a full line of hemp-derived products to help you experience the fullness of life. Whether it's a better night's sleep, relief from worries and tension, or just having fun, consultants at CBD American Shaman will guide you on your journey. Visit findcbdnow.com for a location near you. Findcbdnow.com. CBD American Shaman. Life is better with the feather. In our game, we play with our hearts. We don't play with sticks, bats, or gloves. We don't wear shoulder pads or helmets. We keep playing when it hurts. And we leave everything on the field. What we wear must be built for our game. Since 1979, we've been searching for perfection. We've been thinking, sketching, and designing. We've been building, assembling, and strengthening. We've been cutting, shaping, and painting. We've created strength and beauty time and again. Our machines are made for one thing, the perfect hit. We are the crouch, we are the bind, we are the set, we are the squeeze, we are the hit. We are Rhino, home of the scrum.
D American Shaman. Find a location near you today. And a good morning to you, rugby fans. Welcome to beautiful New Orleans, Louisiana. We have seven rugby action coming for you all day. Look, blow up the spot, then we run it. Ready or not, here we coming. Somebody better say a prayer for me. Tonight may get a little crazy. Handles that one, finally moving out. It looks like they are in the try zone again, extending their lead. play with our hearts. We don't play with sticks, bats, or gloves. We don't wear shoulder pads or helmets. We keep playing when it hurts. And we leave everything on the field. What we wear must be built for our game. It's time to take care of yourself and enjoy life again. CBD American Shaman has a full line of hemp-derived products to help you experience the fullness of life. Whether it's a better night's sleep, relief from worries and tension, or just having fun, consultants at CBD American Shaman will guide you on your journey. Visit findcbdnow.com for a location near you. Findcbdnow.com. CBD American Shaman. Life is better with the feather. In our game, we play with our hearts. We don't play with sticks, bats, or gloves. We don't wear shoulder pads or helmets. We keep playing when it hurts. And we leave everything on the field. What we wear must be built for our game. Since 1979, we've been searching for perfection. We've been thinking, sketching, and designing. We've been building, assembling, and strengthening. Cutting, shaping, and painting. We've created strength and beauty time and again. Our machines are made for one thing, the perfect hit. We are the crouch, we are the bind, we are the set, we are the squeeze, we are the hit. We are Rhino, home of the scrum.
DVD American Shaman. Find a location near you today. And a good morning to you rugby fans. Welcome to beautiful New Orleans, Louisiana. We have seven rugby action coming for you all day. Look, go up the spot that we running. Ready or not, here we coming. Somebody better say a prayer for me. Tonight may get a little crazy. Handles that one, finally moving out. It looks like they are in the try zone again, extending their lead. play with sticks, bats, or gloves. We don't wear shoulder pads or helmets. We keep playing when it hurts. And we leave everything on the field. What we wear must be built for our game. It's time to take care of yourself and enjoy life again. CBD American Shaman has a full line of hemp-derived products to help you experience the fullness of life. Whether it's a better night's sleep, relief from worries and tension, or just having fun, consultants at CBD American Shaman will guide you on your journey. Visit findcbdnow.com for a location near you. Findcbdnow.com. CBD American Shaman. Life is better with the feather. In our game, we play with our hearts. We don't play with sticks, bats, or gloves. We don't wear shoulder pads or helmets. We keep playing when it hurts. And we leave everything on the field. What we wear must be built for our game. Since 1979, we've been searching for perfection. We've been thinking, sketching, and designing. We've been building, assembling, and strengthening. We've been cutting, shaping, and painting. We've created strength and beauty time and again. Our machines are made for one thing, the perfect hit. We are the crouch, we are the bind, we are the set, we are the squeeze, we are the hit. We are Rhino, home of the scrum.
CBD American Shaman. Find a location near you today. And a good morning to you rugby fans. Welcome to beautiful New Orleans, Louisiana. We have seven rugby action coming for you all day. Look, this spot, then we run it. Ready or not, here we coming. Somebody better say a prayer for me. Tonight we get a little crazy. You can meet me. Handles that one. Finally moving out. It looks like they are in the try zone again, extending their lead. play with sticks, bats, or gloves. We don't wear shoulder pads or helmets. We keep playing when it hurts. And we leave everything on the field. What we wear must be built for our day. It's time to take care of yourself and enjoy life again. CBD American Shaman has a full line of hemp-derived products to help you experience the fullness of life. Whether it's a better night's sleep, relief from worries and tension, or just having fun, consultants at CBD American Shaman will guide you on your journey. Visit findcbdnow.com for a location near you. Findcbdnow.com. CBD American Shaman. Life is better with the feather. In our game. We play with our hearts. We don't play with sticks, bats, or gloves. We don't wear shoulder pads or helmets. We keep playing when it hurts. And we leave everything on the field. What we wear must be built for our game. Since 1979, we've been searching for perfection. We've been thinking, sketching, and designing. We've been building, assembling, and strengthening. We've been cutting, shaping, and painting. We've created strength and beauty time and again. Our machines are made for one thing, the perfect hit. We are the crouch, we are the bind, we are the set, we are the squeeze, we are the hit. We are Rhino, home of the scrum.
DVD American Shaman. Find a location near you today. And a good morning to you rugby fans. Welcome to beautiful New Orleans, Louisiana. We have seven rugby action coming for you all day. Blow up the spot, then we run it. Ready and not here we coming. Somebody better say a prayer for me. Tonight may get a little crazy. Handles that one, finally moving out. It looks like they are in the try zone again, extending their lead. Play with sticks, bats, or gloves. We don't wear shoulder pads or helmets. We keep playing when it hurts. And we leave everything on the field. What we wear must be built for our game. It's time to take care of yourself and enjoy life again. CBD American Shaman has a full line of hemp-derived products to help you experience the fullness of life. Whether it's a better night's sleep, relief from worries and tension, or just having fun, consultants at CBD American Shaman will guide you on your journey. Visit findcbdnow.com for a location near you. Findcbdnow.com. CBD American Shaman. Life is better with the feather. In our game, we play with our hearts. We don't play with sticks, bats, or gloves. We don't wear shoulder pads or helmets. We keep playing when it hurts. And we leave everything on the field. What we wear must be built for our game. Since 1979, we've been searching for perfection. We've been thinking, sketching, and designing. We've been building, assembling, and strengthening. We've been cutting, shaping, and painting. We've created strength and beauty time and again. Our machines are made for one thing, the perfect hit. We are the crouch, we are the bind, we are the set, we are the squeeze, we are the hit. We are Rhino, home of the scrum. <laughs> 